And we're live. Excellent. Right. So get on the anthems. But I'm going to read out this little speech here, which I've prepared, uh, just to make things move nice and quickly. Uh, my name's Daniel, and I wanted to introduce Dave, but it, once again, he's asleep on the bed. Um, but me and Dave, the dog, together were Kerno Camps. Thank you very much for joining us on this live stream. Uh, right. So I like to think of myself as a very amateur slightly experienced well camper and i firmly believe that when it comes to exploring the outdoors and enjoying the view from a tent well if i can you can which is what it says up there um this week has been a real mess for campers who enjoy all that dartmoor has to offer and um, if you're not aware of that where have you been hiding uh We've had a high court battle, a clarification from a judge that says that wild camping is not a form of recreation. Uh, as such, we've then had the right to camp on Dartmoor, something that has been enjoyed in England exclusively on Dartmoor, removed. Thus, a ban on wild camping. All of this seems to have been instigated by a single wealthy landowner, a Mr. Alex Darwell, and possibly his wife too, who battled the DNPA, or the Dartmoor National Parks Authority, in court to have the right to wild camp on his land removed, and thus the judgment was made. Now, initially, this cast was supposed to be about the ban, what has led to it, as well as the impact, as, sorry, as well as impact statements from some of the most well-known faces in our space, and how we see the future of wild camping. Uh, but yesterday, the DMPA announced that after negotiations with landowners, their camping ban was lifted and I celebrated. I put a, sh a short video yesterday morning to inform everybody of this change, and then it all went a bit downhill. Pretty soon, I was slapped left, right, and centre with comments and messages and emails from people saying things like, at what cost and why should we pay to wild camp and the dmpa can't afford it well i was a bit confused anyway it took me a while to find out the source of these complaints and as it turns out there is to be an exchange of money from the dmpa to the landowners in exchange for wild camping to be reinstated <sighs> Later on yesterday, the DMPA uploaded the new update to the interactive wild camping map that we all know and love and enjoy uh, on their website. And would you believe it, there is a lot less purple on that map than there was previously. Last night, I did a cast with Justin Moores, and we discussed these changes to the map. I'll put a link to that one down in the description below. So that's the short and sweet of it. So let's get on with tonight's cast. Tonight I am being joined by possibly three other wild camping YouTube personalities. Uh, that includes Sai, uh, whose channel is Realibran, and Stu, as in LNT Kerno. And uh, last but not least, at some point, she's not here yet, but I hope that Karen from Karen's Gone Wild will also be enjoying, enjoying, joining us. Uh, when she does join us, she's not going to be here for long because she's got a bunch of other stuff to do, which includes packing her bags for a wild camp tomorrow night. So when we do see her, that'll be great, but she's not going to be here for the immediate and she's not going to be here for long. So, right, that's that done. That's my introduction. So let's bring in the two guys that I've got waiting in the studio right now. First of all, we've got LNT Kerno. Uh, Stu, Yo. do you want to say hi? Hey, gueis. Hey, guys. How are you all doing? Thanks for joining us. And Dan, thanks for inviting me, mate. In no worries, buddy. No worries. Uh, LNT Kerno has got a rather new wild camping uh, channel. You're the other way, mate. Right. The other that way. way. No, the there other way. That's the one. One that, of those. That's you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, there's a link, again, to his channel in the description below. Please go along and enjoy his yeah. content. Subscribe if you like it. Give him some likes and comments. It all helps. Uh, the next guy that I'm going to bring in is Sai. Um, his channel, again, is Realibran. 
Hi, Sai. Welcome to the stream, buddy. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You all right, Sai? You all right, buddy? Right, guys. Thank you very much for joining us. So let's get straight into this because this could take a while. I've got a few bullet points that we need to get through. Um, But first, before I do that, we do have a bunch of people who are already in the chat and typing away. Um, I just wanted to briefly go over a couple. Uh, where are we? Well, everyone's just basically saying good evening or hi and everything, and that's really good. It's good to see. So let's hit the banners. The first banner that we're going to pop up is our guests. So as we've already said, the guests are Real Brand, uh, LNT Kerno, and perhaps at some point Karen's gone wild. And we're going to start off the discussion with uh, the recent loss of the right to wild camp in Dartmoor National Park without mm. permission from landowners. <laughs> Guys, how do we feel about that happening last Friday? Oh, uh, God. Mixed emotions, mate. <laughs> not quite Mixed sure emotions. how to feel it. Yeah, it's still kind of not, not quite sunk in that it happened in the first place, you know? It's still kind of processing that from weeks ago. So, um, it was a bit of a kick in the nuts, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Like... I can't say I'm surprised, but at the same time, I was gutted like because I thought that we might actually win because just just the notion of outlawing wild camping and access yeah. to nature yeah. is it's just ridiculous to even con- comprehend, you know. So it I just bonkers, figured, no, it? yeah, I thought the judge just the judge was just saying, "No, nah, mate, like you know, it's ridiculous. Get out of my court," you know. <laughs> Yeah, but I no, actually um, had the same thought. I thought it was going to be like, get out of here. <laughs> go, go, go back to your 4,000 acres and mm, plant some pansies mm. or something. Yeah. What about you, Sai? What did you think? <laughs> Sai keeps freezing up on us. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I understand how... I, I can't understand it. I can understand the Convinced. Hear me. It's it's very jumpy, bud. Can you hear me? Okay, I did really want size input on that, but unfortunately, he seems to be having no. uh, some audio issues at the moment. We'll give him a moment. Maybe he'll be able to get that fixed. Um, Is it very jumpy. No, we're pretty bad. So, okay. Well, okay, I'm. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna run over my own um, point of view here. So, yeah, yeah. Go I remember it. last week or on the 13th, um, I was at work, and I got a text mm-hmm. message which says it's, it was. It's from my old man. He says, "Well, camping's banned. You're not allowed to do it anymore, mate." And I was like, "All right." whatever you know it's yeah <laughs> that's my old man he he often doesn't know what he's talking about i'll ignore it yeah and then loads and loads of messages started rolling in bing, from bing, bing, elsewhere bing. yeah and so <laughs> and i think i think everybody who is um heavy on the social media side or the wild camping mm-hmm. side was experiencing the same we we're probably all getting these pings on our phones saying wild camping's banned if you heard the news and when enough of the messages came in, I mean, like I said, I was at work at the time, I was quite busy, and enough of the messages were coming in, and I, I was like, oh, this is real. This is actually for real. This is this is gutting. I've just spent thousands of pounds getting into this hobby, and yeah. I, it's changed <laughs> my life, mm. and yeah, it's amazing, and, and now I can't do it anymore. What's going to happen? So I got on the internet and I started having a look. And seriously, I I'm not I'm not too proud to say my eyes welled up and at least one tear might have yeah. fallen down this horrible, ugly face of mine. It was gutting. It was absolutely yeah. gutting. And speaking to other people within the community as well, and um, we were all shocked. I think the only people that that didn't seem shocked are the ones that weren't particularly heavy invested. Yeah. I mean, for example, my old man. He was like, yeah, I knew it was going to happen. Obviously. Down with the Tories, <laughs> people with yeah. money. You know, it was it was all of that, that kind of response, which 
arguably is true. Um, mm. I, I don't really want to go into too much politics, um, but really, it's everybody who didn't wild camp thought it was going to happen. That's how it felt to me. Everybody else yeah. knew it was going to yeah. happen. Yeah, but we didn't. We didn't believe it. Yeah, I think which, partly which because really if, if you don't, if you don't wild camp, you don't get it. You know, you don't get the appeal. You don't get what it means to people. Um, you don't get the you know the scenery that you get to experience and the nature and just the tranquility and stuff. If if you if that's not part of your life, you, you're not going to understand what it means to people and why so many people now are pissed off with what happened and then what is now happening and going forward. <laughs> it's yeah, it, I think it's, it's definitely once you're kind of in this world, it kind of takes over, like you say. You know, it it, it becomes more than just a hobby, doesn't it? Really. It, it really does, yeah. I've just, um, yeah. size having problems at the moment, so I've just removed him from okay. the screen for a minute, give him a chance to hopefully get things sorted. Um, just going to type out a quick message for him. Yeah. Uh, take a few minutes mm. to get sorted. Just plug in a lot. Buddy, there we go, right. <laughs> there we go. So... No. How did you? Obviously, you're you're tied up with a, a good range of of wild campers as well. Um, you do yeah. camp group camps with with other people. Mark Jeffrey, yeah. Pat, uh, is it Paddy? Sorry, a few others. Yeah. Um, how did they react? How did your your buddies react to this? Um, well, we've got a WhatsApp group. Um, basically, I met Pat and our buddy Rory on the Summit or Nothing Patreon camp back in. Mm -hmm. September, October, I think it was. Um, I remember uh, you, I met, you telling me you was going yeah, to one. Yeah, I met them there and thought they were just, you know, some guys got following each other on Instagram, just kind of got chatting backwards and forwards. And I thought, you know what, like, you know, I don't know many people around this area that are into the same stuff as I am. Obviously, these these guys are local to the mall. They can access it quite easily. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm going to get the numbers, make a WhatsApp group and just add, add them on there. We can then organized between ourselves if want to you know if someone's free one weekend you just get on the, the group All right guys what's up um anyone want to come out this weekend yeah cool where you going backwards and forwards you know not everyone has to kind of jump in at the same time but you can kind of you yeah know, just just organize if you're up for it really so we've all this week, uh, my phone has been blowing up <laughs> at work <laughs> um, and at college as well. Um, I think I was at work the other day. I checked my phone in the morning when I get into work, make a coffee, reply to whatever's going on there. And then um, I think at crib time, about 11-ish, um, got my phone mm. out again. There's like 46 notifications on the group. <laughs> um, and it's just you know been all this week backwards and forwards, just basically saying what, we think what's going on, how you know, how it's affecting us, um, what we think the outcome is going to be going forward. Um, sharing, you know, like you know, videos about it that we've seen on YouTube and Instagram and things like that. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, and obviously when the map came out, you know, massive discussion on that as well. Um, again, last night I was on my way to college when the map got released at five pm. Um, I do college six till nine. Right, when it right. came out again, again, there was like loads and loads of messages and voice notes, everything to catch up on. Um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely this week dominated <laughs> most of the, yeah, uh, the group chat. <laughs> not just the group chat, it's, it's your mind, isn't mm. it? It's just constantly yeah. occupying your mind. Uh, size come yeah. back, and I can see him down there in the studio. He's looking a little bit more mobile. Let's bring him back in. Cool. How you doing, Sai? You, you, you all sorted now, mate? Can you hear me? I can, I can hear, hear you. Yes. So, if we want to carry on, Sai, you know, where were you when, me. when the news That's was announced? A good start. And <laughs> where were you when, when the news of the, the, the ban on wild camping was announced? And, and how did it make you feel, mate? Nope. Um, at work when oh. Uh, oh, there we go. Um, I was absolutely gutted. Yeah. Oh. Oh, you got again? Okay, so um, <laughs> so it's just 
uh, crashed out. While we wait for Cy, let's just have a little look at some of the comments that are coming in at the moment. Yeah. Um, so Game Vids says, was the army alive firing on the moor? Will this create a problem with the reduced map? Um, basically, mm -hmm. no, mate. It, it's not going to be any different to what it was yeah. prior. It, if the army are live firing or any of the armed services are out there live firing, mm -hmm. then the beacons yeah. get lit up, the flags go up, and mm -hmm. you're not allowed within those areas. And it will still be reported on the Dartmoor Wild Camping map as yeah. it always is. Yeah. So I think we'll be fine with that. Um, the next comment yeah, I wanted to bring up was Steve Outdoors. Steve, hi, Steve. Um, Steve says, it did not come as a surprise to me at all, as money always yeah. talks, <laughs> and that's what it's all yeah. about. I, mm. I, I think we will... I mean, that, that couples up, actually, with Robert Clark, who says money will always win, yes. I think. I'm yeah, not yeah. surprised. Um, mm. We will get on to the subject of money a little bit later on in the cast. Um, but I, 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 I like to take a slightly optimistic approach to these things, and I'm hoping that, I mean... I really am. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to take the opinion that this is not about money. This is purely down to damage to land that landowners want to protect. That's what I'm, I'm trying to keep mm. in my head. Although it is hard to uh, stay on track with that line of thought when you're hearing about money changing hands between the DMPA and the landowners as part yeah. of the agreement for us to be able to continue wild camping. So, yes, there is the possibility that money was the great motivator here. Mm. Um, what else have we got? Uh, basically, it looks like everybody else is just talking between themselves. So let's just yeah. let them carry on. Yeah. Sorry, Dan, are we good like, now, mate? Oh, sorry. Dan, um, yeah. So Karen just popped up on Facebook. She'll be on about half nine, hopefully, she says. Oh, lovely. Lovely. Yeah, okay. That's excellent. Excellent yeah. news. Right. Uh, let me see if I can get rid of that comment off the screen. Sai, are you back in the land of the living now, mate, or are you frozen out <laughs> again? I'm going to pull lots of faces while I... <laughs> Right, okay. I think we best move oh, on with it. Oh, he's, he's moving. There you go. Uh, he's moving he's in and out. I don't know whether you can hear me okay. <laughs> we can hear you, buddy, but you seem to be a little bit delayed. And uh, <laughs> what's the word, gamer? She's laggy. <laughs> Either way, I'm still going to move the discussion on now because obviously there is a lot of people who are watching this and we are taking up their time and it is Friday night. Maybe they want to go to the pub or something. I don't blame them. Right. So the next, next point that I'd like to discuss is the court case that was brought by Alexandra Darwell. <sighs> uh, fund <laughs> yeah. manager, Dartmoor sixth largest landowner. And he argued mm -hmm. that the rights to wild camp has never existed we're talking about literally the words the right to wild camp has never existed now <laughs> let's stay off the case of alexander darwell for a moment Let, let's not look at him in particular and the reason i'm saying that is because Along with a lot of other landowners, Alexander Darwell has opened up still more to wild camping. Mm. And I want, again, this is the optimistic side of me speaking. All right. I want to believe that he wants us to wild camp, mm. but he wants us to respect <laughs> the land. So for a moment, we'll, we'll get on to Alex. Alex yeah. AD. We'll get on to the devil of Dartmoor <laughs> in a minute. Um, but let's talk about the right to wild camp and whether mm. or not it has ever actually existed. So, yeah. first of all, let's, let's <laughs> define wild camping. <clears throat> I, I, I know in my head what wild camping is. Uh, size yep. just dropped out again. So, Steve, you go ahead. Tell me, what is your 
individual definition of wild camping. And while you do that, I'm going to yeah. call myself another class of JD. <laughs> there is. Well, um, to me, wild camping in this respect, like with regards to, you know, Dartmoor, is being, it's self explanatory really, in the wild, not, you know, near a road, near a car park. Um, somewhere you can easily get stuff to and all the kids and all the family and you know grandma and the dog um mm -hmm. to, to me what wild camping is going into the wild and camping um and obviously people who do that um like like me and you and everyone else you know Sai, Karen, everyone trev nathan you know uh, we we do it oh the list could we, go on for hours mate oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly yeah. yeah but but yeah obviously you know wild camping um is it's going out into the wild and camping it's not like say rocking up with everything in tow having a barbecue leaving a mess um so the actual right to wild camp i think um you know you respect the wild and that's why you're there to spend time in it um whether yeah. that be on your own or with friends um so yeah it, it's i think it instinctively have a right because you respect the land and you want to be there you want to spend time in it um so it, it's not written in stone that people have a right to wild camp but you know for, for thousands of years people have been traveling they you know they get too tired they've walked too much that day or the weather turns they have to bed down for night spend Absolutely. Some time. It, it's li literally since humans could walk we've been wild camping haven't we really <laughs> oh yeah 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 it just didn't have that name before, you know prior prior yeah. to possibly the last 10 years wild camping mm. used to just be called living yeah yeah <laughs> basically yeah. existing you know uh, yeah and yeah. we all have a right to live we all have a right to exist and therefore we could say that we've all got a right to wild camp mm. For, for, for me, yeah. uh, wild camping is, by by my own and a widely accepted definition, is you chuck it in your back, on your back, and you carry it. If you can't yeah. carry it on your in your backpack, it doesn't belong yeah. with you. So you should leave that at yeah. home. If you have to carry anything extra, if you have to make a second trip, that's Or get the family camping. to help you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's not wild camping. Yeah. And more to the point is that everything that's in your bag when you walk out onto Dartmoor or the Lake District or into the mountains or, or anywhere for that matter, even if you're just taking your dog for a walk, whatever you yeah. take with you is what you bring back. And the only reason to have yeah. less in that backpack is because you've eaten it or you've drank it or yeah, because you're exactly. wearing it. Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> if you can't do that, then you're not wild camping. If you can't do that, then you are either on a campsite or mm -hmm. you're the worst kind, which is the fly camper. Yes. Which I so think the fly camper. Yeah. Um, yeah. For anybody who's not aware, fly camping is very much like fly tipping in definition. Mm. Um, basically, yeah. you do the opposite of leave no trace. You leave everything behind. You leave scorch marks on the ground. You leave barbecue. Mm. You, leave, you, you, leave you leave sweet wrappers, tents, yeah. all sorts. You know, <laughs> you are the very definition of what us wild campers are trying to change. Yeah. So that's, that's yeah. my definition of wild camping. So... The other side to this is whether or not uh, wild camping is anything other than, let me bring up the banner here. Um, oh, no, I actually changed that. I got rid of that, I think. I mentioned it in my, my notes here. Um, where are we? I think I've dropped it on the floor. Oh, excuse me. Right. Um, yeah, I mentioned it in my notes on the introduction here. It says, a clarification from a judge that says, wild camping is not a form of recreation. And the <laughs> 1985 Dartmoor Commons Act refers yeah. to the word in particular recreation to say that yeah. recreation is allowed. So we're allowed to walk on the moors on foot or on horseback for the purposes yeah. of recreation. Yeah. 
Stu, what is wild camping if it's not recreation? I have no idea, but um, but yeah, I mean, you can walk, you can hike, you know, you, you can go fell running, you can take a horse. That is recreation, but you know, you can walk your dog. I you can walk, take days yeah, for a walk out yeah. of Dartmoor. That's recreation. And, and, and you do, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, if, if the weather turns or whatever, you know, or, you know, you, you put a tarp, you put a tarp up, you make a brew, you sit underneath it. You know, it's, it's, uh, I, I don't get how they can say it's not because recreation is something you do. Uh, I'll just have to get the, uh, the meaning up so I can, so I can know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> recreation meaning. Uh, Activity done for enjoyment when one is not working. There you go. That's what Google says it is. Google Dictionary. Well, Google's absolutely so how... right about everything. I know that because <laughs> I had a headache earlier and I Googled my symptoms and it turns out that I might have bowel cancer. <laughs> so, you know, Google's the winner, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah but... No offence to anybody who might actually have bowel cancer <laughs> below the, the line. Um, yeah. yeah. So Dave Outdoor says that his definition is camp in the wild and leave no trace and being close to nature. Mate, you're absolutely yeah. spot on. Uh, Robert Clark says, wild camping for me, everything in my pack, walking the land with respect and leaving mm -hmm. only footprints. Yeah. Again, that's that's a good definition, you know? Absolutely spot. I'm yeah. trying to go over I the mean, comments here as we go, but there's a lot yeah. coming in. This is like a really popular yeah. stream. Uh, I, I've just searched for Oxford Dictionary meaning of recre of recreation. So that's basically what you know the whole English language is based around. So according to that, the meaning of recreation it says the fact of people doing things for pleasure when they are not working, the need to improve facilities for leisure and recreation and the increasing use of land for recreation. So they're just examples where you would use the word recreation and it has land in the same sentence. So obviously land. you go out to do, yeah, you, you go out to enjoy things that you like doing when you're not working on land. On Where's land. the best place to do that in Southwest? On Dartmoor. <laughs> you know, so, bingo. Absolutely yeah. bingo. And you yeah. know what? I'd actually go as far as to say that's the, that Dartmoor is probably the best place in the whole of the UK to go for, for pure variety yeah. Um, yeah. of of the the terrain of the oh, views, yeah. it's yeah. it's absolutely spot on. I, I, I'm saying mm. that based on what I've seen on YouTube of places like Lake District, Peak District, yeah, the the mountains in Scotland and Wales. I've never actually been to them. Yeah, I hold my hands up. I mean, um, yeah, but from from what I've seen, Dartmoor's the place. Um, mm. Real Brand, Sai has joined the chat. He's he's dropped out of the live streams. <laughs> he's obviously having issues. He says, sorry about that. I should have got the hamster to power the laptop but could only find a gerbil. <laughs> um, <laughs> mate, I'm really glad that we're not getting your wit. Yeah, into that's a shame. We've been just into really. Sai's input on it. Yeah. It really would because Sai mm. is like captain authority when it comes to Dartmoor. He's... He's, a, he's an absolute walking encyclopedia of knowledge when it yeah. comes to everything Dartmoor. If you want to know a place, yeah. the size of the man, he, he knows everything. Um, let's just have a, another quick go through the comments uh, before we move on to the next subject. In fact, actually, no, let's go back. Let, let, let's go back. Alexander yeah. Darwin. All right, yes. he's got his possible devil horns going on. Um <laughs> He's hated in the wild camping community right now. I want to keep an open mind. Yep. trying to. I really am. But I've termed him the devil of Dartmoor for a reason. I'm not happy with what he's done mm. or what yeah. he's instigated at all. Yeah. Now, Alexander Darwell, as it says down here, he's, he's Dartmoor's sixth largest landowner. He owns, mm. he owns, I hate that word, four thousand acres yeah. of yeah. land this is on top of his ten thousand acres in scotland i was about to come up with that subject as well so mm. he owns another ten thousand yeah. acres of land in scotland where mm -hmm. as we know and we're quite envious of scotland mm. has much 
better right to roam laws than than England. Yeah, Much I mean, better. do we know if he kicks up any fuss about wild camping in Scotland on his land? No, he doesn't. <laughs> what he's been kicking no. up a fuss about on his land in Scotland is gold panning. I saw that, yeah, charging yeah. people, like, was it t £10 a day for a permit or something? Um, yes, and they're only allowed to go a year. Yeah, and apparently that money goes to like the local church or something. It, it may well do, but the fact that he's like monetizing, you know, a kid finding a little fleck of gold possibly in a stream after being there for six hours, you know, when he's worth, you know, I'm, I, I couldn't find a definite amount. I looked earlier, um, trying to find, you know, he, he's net worth. Well, an ounce of gold when I looked but, yesterday, yeah. an ounce of gold's worth, I think it was 1,850 quid. Um, yeah. There's a sizable chunk, but you're not going to find mm. a lump, an ounce of gold. Exactly, yeah. It's yeah. not going to happen. But I mean, he's I mean, still charging yeah. money yeah. for people to use his land. So he's monetizing his land that has, prior to he, uh, Alexander Darwell and, uh, is it Diane Darwell? Di Diana, I think. Something like that. Uh, Mrs. No, no, Darwell. Di Diane, I think, yeah. 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 Mrs. Dole. So Mr. and Mrs. Dole, prior to them purchasing the, that land, people have been using it for gold panning mm. for many, 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 many years. Mm. Once again, Alexander Darwell comes in and screws it up. For Scotland, they screwed yep. it up down at the opposite end of the country for us. And yeah. I cannot. He, he just needs to buy some land in the Peak District now and mess it up as well. And he's got yeah, all, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lake District, Lake District, and he just yeah. it's all up, you know. <laughs> um, he, I, 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 I want to keep an open mind. Again, going back to this optimistic side of me, um, I want to think he's not the devil and that he yeah. does have the best of intentions. Mm. I don't see it. I, I, I want yeah. to believe it. I, yeah. my, my heart wants to see it. My head is saying no. He's, he's the devil. He's the devil of Dartmoor. Yeah, I mean, it, just the fact that he said initially, you know, no one has the right to wild camp on Dartmoor. And uh, I think the his lawyer said no one has the right to occupy Stolmore overnight or something. Mm -hmm. um, and then to take up residence, was it? Yeah, yeah. Um, it, Isn't that what he said? He said nobody's got the, the right to take up residence on Stormwater. It, it, it said, um, I'll try and find it. It said basically no one has the, uh, one minute. I will stall more uh, statement. That's going to take a while now. Um, but basically, um, it, it mentions the word occupy, um, occupying Stormwater overnight. Um, and again, the, the meaning of occupy is to reside or have one's place of business. Okay. Um, yeah. So it, it means to reside. If you you know, look at the meaning of to reside, it says, <laughs> and I posted this on Instagram last week, have one's you permanent posted, home you in a particular in the, place. The, I did. Yeah, you yes, posted it in, in, the, in the WhatsApp group as well. The well. Yeah, I did in the Wild Company group. Yeah. So the, the meaning of reside, which is obviously reside, as we know, means to occupy. Reside says to have one's permanent home in a particular place. Um, so their whole argument from the, the get-go, to me, made no sense whatsoever. No, no, Because no. we're not there permanently, and it's not our home. Um, and we're moving from place to place across the moor. Do you think so, it's possible that if they got really, really picky, they could say, well, look, you are putting a structure on the land which is pegged into mm. the ground, mm. therefore it is a permanent structure, at least for the period mm. of time in which you will be occupying it. I, I'm just... Mate, I, it, I don't it wouldn't know. surprise me, to be honest. I, I, I it's think, that finicky, it, isn't it? Yeah, and, and I read somewhere that he hired like the Times Lawyer of the Year or something. He's paid like over a hundred thousand pounds for this lawyer for this case, and he's got the money for it. So he'd probably do it again and find some sort of clause he could use. Yeah, you know, if, if people kick up a stink about it, which you know, they're, they're well within the rights to do so, if someone kicks up a stink about it, he's he's probably then going to you know 
build a case against that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, but, you know, you can't peg down a bivy bag, I guess. <laughs> so there, there is that potentially, yeah. 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 The, 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 well, the, the way around, ways around it for us as well, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah, just, just the fact... Bag, I, I can't. You know? No, I, I've done... No. Two, I think I've done. Yeah, I've I've done. Well, I've done a couple in the garden when it's been like me to your showers and things on my like, in the summer when it's you know I know it's not going to rain and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, I've done one on the moor uh, with a tarp, um, and then I've done one in the woods as well. Um, in right. you, some, you're some, a braver some man than I. Yeah. The idea of, I mean, yeah. did you know that Dartmoor is the home of the largest land slug in the UK? Oh, really? Mm. You know, these big black I didn't ones know that. you see out there, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. they get big. I think they get to about you can't see, it. I think they get to about six <laughs> to eight inches. Sorry, right. oh, six wow. to eight okay. inches, you know, um, <laughs> yeah. we are guys after all. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, they get big, and the idea of one of those six to eight inches, those, no, <laughs> yeah, just not doing it, not doing that at all. Yeah, um, see, see, I I'll didn't know, I didn't know that, John. I might not um, do any more baby counts now. <laughs> After no, 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 that information, no. <laughs> have you seen the spiders? Yeah. Oh, mate, don't, don't even get mm. me started. I, I've, I've seen the massive hairy caterpillars, like the black and orange spiky ones. Yeah, they're kind of cool. Yeah, they, they oh, look scary God. as hell, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My, they, my they do look is, like is some sort of nasty from yeah. an anime um, <laughs> or manga. They do. Or yeah. Um, so the Cornish Wild, uh, sorry, the, not the Cornish Wild Camper, excuse me, the Cornish mm. Camper um, Kyle. says hey, buddy. camping is definitely recreational. I would totally agree with you on that, my friend. Mm. Um, he also says that being out wild camping for me is leaving no trace, treating nature with kindness and respect. And soothing mental health. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. I'm. I have a very. Uh, what's what's the best word here? Fuck it. Bad experience with <laughs> mental health over the years. Mm. I suffered with depression and severe anxiety for all of my yeah. adult life, and. One of the things that wild camping does for me is mm. it gives me, I think the term mental reset has been used yeah. a lot yeah. for, for wild camping. It really does. Is yeah. There's something definite about just maybe not the walk for some people. I don't know. Uh, but for me, it's being exhausted at the end of a walk, pitching yeah. a tent. Half the time I go out there, I don't eat. Um, I just lie there. Mm or sit there and I look up and out. Yeah. And yeah, I don't think, I don't think. And that's brilliant because mm. when your mind stops, that's when you get your reset. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, anyway. I, I've been, my, my first camp was up on King's Tour and I'd been camping, you know, when I lived up, up country, like, you know, because I'm obviously from Manchester, I don't sound like you guys. Um, Sorry, I'm going to stop you yes. there. Sorry, Stu, I'm going to stop you there for just one minute. That yep. first camp that you did at King's Tour, yeah. if I remember correctly, you were messaging me at the time while I was over on Fogging Tour. Yes. And you were yes, flashing yes. light to me. Is that right? I was, yes. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i've never asked you about that and i think there was a period of time when, <laughs> when that happened mm. and then you and i didn't communicate and then suddenly mm. we were communicating it's been in my mind ever since was that that thing <laughs> and yeah at last we've got I'm, it I'm, I'm, I'm sure it was mate yeah because i think i put pictures up the next day as well and then I, I noticed that you'd put the pictures up and i was like oh shit that's just around the corner because at the time i didn't yeah. really know dartmoor that well um and like I'd been to Princetown and stuff, and I thought, right, I'll, I'll, what I'll do, because well, obviously you could back then, because Maryvale was in the camping map. I thought, right, I know Princetown, I know how to get to and from Princetown. I'll just go down the road a little bit, um, and then I'll, I'll see where I end up. I'll find somewhere I can park up, and then I'll, I'll get the map up on my phone, find it on Google Maps, and I'll know if I'm in the area, right, I'll camp there. So initially, I was going to go to, is it Great Miss that's opposite Kingstown? Yes. Great, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, I was it's going to the side of the road. So if you, you park yeah, it yeah, four uh, wins, Across, yeah. And instead of yeah. going straight to uh, it's across King, the road. you just go yeah. the opposite way towards Great Miss. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So I um, 
I was initially I was gone ahead for that one and I kind of got there and I thought that looks a lot further away than I remember it being. <laughs> um I thought, oh I'll I'll go that way. That looks all right. Because I'd been kind of on the um uh, the, the grassy bit after um the wall at Four Winds. I'd been around there before. And I right, knew right. from there, if I keep walking, I know, I know there's a stream at the bottom and then there's a bit of a bit of a hill and then you know you keep there's a tour basically. So I thought, right, yeah, I've yeah, got yeah. Car, cars here. It's a de- nice little decent walk. Areas I've not kind of explored across before. I know it's a water source. I've got my filter in my bag. I was you know desperate to try that out for the first time. Um, and then yeah, I thought you know I'll go I'll go up Kingston instead because it was already kind of you know I got there after work. Um, so it was kind of no, it wasn't after work. Sorry, I got there after I'd been on navigation course. That was it. But I'd been working late the day before. Woke up that morning really early to get there for like you know nine o'clock i think it was but it was october so it was dark anyway i was knackered it was wasn't it yeah yeah. and obviously it goes dark at you know half three four o'clock so yeah i've been on this course i thought right i'll go camping had my separate hiking bag with all my gear in in the back and uh yeah i got to four winds looked at the great miss i thought no i'll, I'll go to the small <laughs> it's my first camp <laughs> <laughs> Because at the time I was only using like a twenty-five quid little bag, right? Um, yeah. And it, you know, for the price, it was all right. It served me well, but it's you know when you got. You know what? You know, I've, 60... I've heard a lot of people say that about yeah. that bag as well. I know which yeah. one you're on about. Yeah, yeah, they're not bad. It was like the burgundy and blue one that I got. I think it was on sale for like eighteen quid or something. It's like, yeah, I'll get that. I was just picking up some bread or something. Um, but yeah, first camp, I had probably like you know sixteen, seventeen kilos in the back because <laughs> I took everything. Um, yeah, so the, yeah, King I was Soul in the same the position. Run, my first, my very first camp yeah. um, was intended to be King's Tour, and like you, I had I think it was, if I remember correctly, it was around eighteen to twenty kilos in my backpack. It was crazy. Wow. Um, Stu, before we carry on, um, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. can see that Karen has jumped into the hey. studio, so she's waiting cool. to come on and go live. So let me just introduce Karen. It's, it's daft thing to say, just in case. Um, we all, I'm, I'm sure we all know Karen. Karen is a mm. local pink haired celebrity. Um, <laughs> she's an absolute character. She's a fantastic personality. And yeah. I do count her as one of my favorite friends. Um, so I'm going to bring Karen in now. I know she's already drinking. So get on, Karen. <laughs> If you haven't met Karen before, here she is. This is Karen. Karen's gone wild. Hello. Hi, Karen. Hey, Karen. Hello. Hello. I look like I'm in a cave. I don't know why, but there we go. I'm not <laughs> in a cave. But I am on the Cornish Lager. Good on. I, I love that Where's Sai? What happened to Sai? He, he, he was having problems with his internet. Technical issues. Yeah, technical issues. <laughs> so, unfortunately, he's dropped out and... Um, he did mention just briefly a moment ago, uh, where is it, going back up through the chat. Da, 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 da. Uh, Beck, Becca's in. Hey, Becca. Right, okay. I've, I've lost hey. it. But basically, hey, Sai has said, Real Brown has said, I will help out in the chat. So thank you very much, Sai, because the chat is a... Is ab- it kicking it's off? crazy. Yeah, it really is. I'm <laughs> really surprised. Off. <laughs> just how I mean, right now we've got 23 concurrent viewers and our chat is going mental. Oh, um, I can see lots of lovely, lots of lovely names in the chat. Yes, there's lots of familiars, isn't there? Yeah. Um, I do like this comment staying on the subject. Sorry, uh, Karen, I don't know if you can see on the ticker tape below, but we're discussing the court case brought by Alexander Darwell a hedge fund manager and Dartmoor's sixth largest landowner who argued the right to camp never existed. Uh, That's what we're discussing at the moment. And in response to that, Richard Lake Bike Packing Adventures on YouTube has written in the comments, the judge needs to get out more and he will, and he will see it for the recreation that it is. And you know what? That's absolutely right. I've got a feeling that, they live on a different planet, don't they? These decision makers, I mean. They live yeah. on a different planet. Absolutely. They don't understand. They've got no comprehension. No. And that's really sad. Um, yeah. Another comment which I want to highlight is, get on Sai. 
Um, Real Brothers says, interesting fact, Fogging Tour, King's Tour, <laughs> and that area oh, wow. are owned by Lord Robra. His family bought their estate from the proceeds of slavery. Now, mm. that's... I'm going to be honest, that's a whole different topic. And <laughs> yeah. l- let's just go with, it's in the past, it happened, we can't deny it, let's acknowledge it, but move on from it. Yeah, okay, mm. they bought their, their estate from the proceeds of slavery, that really sucks that the money came from there, but at the end of the day, the money came from somewhere, didn't it? And everybody with that kind of money has some history, at least in their family history, of extorting mm. somebody for something. So let's go past mm. that. Um, yep. Dave Outdoors writes, I find that wild, cal- wild camping helps me clear my head and deal with any mental health thoughts. is great for the yep. mind, body and soul. Absolutely. I don't think yeah. any of us three are going to disagree with that, are we? No, no. wise I mean, words I, I, indeed, Dave. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, me and you, Karen, we message each other quite relatively often, I'll say. Um, and the amount of times I could not count on both my hands and both my feet that you have told me that you need this. Uh, That's uh, your words. You, yeah. you need this. And yeah. I think we're all in the same boat, don't you think, Steve? Oh, definitely, mate. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I, I've been diagnosed with you know depression, anxiety in the past. And you know, being out in in nature, just you know, not even Dartmoor, just being outside, just does me so much good. It's ridiculous. Um, you know, I, pre, you know, before I moved to Cornwall, I lived in my van for two years. Um, after a breakup, I couldn't afford the house, so I bought a van and converted that and lived in it. Um, and it was just before that initially that um, you know, I got diagnosed with depression. Um, so obviously, I was taking you know, meds and things. I was. But when I, I found that when I was traveling in my van, you know, between, you know, say I had a two or three day weekend, I'd go off to like Snowdonia or, you know, Wales or the Peak District. So, you know, just, just wherever I could in the time time frame that I had. I noticed when I was in those places, I didn't find that I needed to take my meds that day or the day after. Um, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. And, and then Your when I moved to Your serotonin levels have increased. Yes. Yes, yeah. And you don't need that that boost, do you? Exactly, yeah. Um, and then, obviously, when, when I first moved to Cornwall, um, I didn't have a doctor's for about two years. Ooh. So, obviously, I didn't... Oh, yeah, but I found that being in nature, you know, being able to go to the beach after work and things like that, be, you know, th- these woods, these, you know, moorlands, these, you know, hills, this beach like Cornwall for me is like just it's heaven yeah and I'm sure Karen will agree not being from the area originally and now living here you won't want to be around anywhere else would you it's no. just such no, a very no, no, no. like <laughs> what, what about Daniel didn't hear that sorry no I'm drink yeah <laughs> I think maybe you've had enough <laughs> I think I maybe yeah. have <laughs> Yeah. I feel really bad because I'm not replying to people in the comments. But hello, everyone who's saying hello, yeah. hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, obviously b- being down here and you know being in nature and having Dartmoor one. this close, I've I've not needed any meds now. And I've lived in Cornwall for nearly four years. That's amazing. Isn't it? Excellent. Yeah. Right, that's that's a really <laughs> that's good thing. Yeah. If you can look at your local environment and derive from that pleasure mm. and serotonin then yeah. it's a winner, isn't it? And you can see why, yeah. why so many people come here. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I want to go over a few more comments very quickly and get your guys' reactions. I've already, I, I've looked at the comments and I know what my reactions are and they're probably going to be mirrored by yourself. So I'm going <laughs> to stay out of this. Um, Justin Moores, who was on the live stream last night, says... I don't think a decision like this should have been the responsibility of one man, irrespective of, irrespective of him being a judge. Absolutely. What do you guys think? Yeah. 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 You go first, you. Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I think it should have been put to like a, a referendum, at least of the local, um, I don't know, we, we, not that we have like, you know, town elders these days, do we? But I think that. It should have been put to a vote. Really, well, we kind of do, don't people... we? We've got mayors, we've got community yeah, yeah. leaders, and so on and so yeah. forth. Yeah, but, but I don't think 
it, it should have been like like Justin says, it shouldn't have been one man making the decision that affects no. you know thousands of a people. Joint committee. Yes, yeah, and, it, it, it should yeah. have been. Uh, sorry, Kogan. But you, well, I'm just thinking because you think if if that had happened to be a judge who loved wild camping and hiking, mm. the decision would have been different, wouldn't it? So absolutely, it shouldn't mm. have been made yeah, by yeah, one yeah. person. He probably never yeah. is a, like. Do you know what I mean? He's just probably someone who goes to a fancy restaurants for dinner and loves being in the city and just has no interest at all in being out in nature or hiking or any any kind of outdoor activity at all so it, it could have been a totally different decision if it was a different uh, yeah. person with different interests that's not right is it that's it, not this, right this judge dude he could have he, he could be the kind of guy who steps out of his front door straight into an uber Straight to the courthouse, steps out of the Uber, goes into the courthouse, stays there all day, comes out, steps into another Uber, goes home. And his only exposure is the amount of steps that it takes to get from his door at work or at home to that cab. Yeah, absolutely. Zero appreciation of yeah. what we're mm. fighting for and what we need. Yeah. And that's yeah. the thing that I want to extol here is that this isn't just something that we want. This isn't something that we desire. And I don't just mean us three. I mean the whole of the, the mm. Dartmoor wild the camping community. community and the whole of the, the wild camping community, the hiking community, uh, the rambling community, the, the going out for a dog walk community. Mm. Anybody who enjoys the, the outdoors community, we need this. Not only do yeah. we mm. need this, but more people need this. Yeah. Mm. So to take it away from us is taking it away from everybody. Mm. And yeah. that is a really, really sad, sad thing to do. Yeah. Um, and I don't know how they, they, this guy sleeps at night. I really don't. That, that was such a terrible, yeah. terrible decision. He's made a decision. Um, that I, I don't know if he's a criminal judge or anything like that, but let's mm. just say he's he's responsible for deciding the outcome of a, a criminal case where a guy has murdered somebody. Mm. Okay. He's putting that, he's making the decision to take away that human being from society and place him into jail. That cures a problem for, I hate to say it, it sounds really heartless, but a very small number of people. That's the, the family, the victims or the associated victims of that, of of the person that's been murdered and also the the very small amount of people who could potentially be murdered in the future in this case in the the, the wild camping scenario we've got one guy the same guy who has made a decision which affects the mm. the lives of hundreds of thousands of people every single year this year next year in 10 years, in 20 years, and so on and so forth, for the rest of time, potentially. Mm. That's a lot of responsibility for one guy wearing a robe and carrying a little gavel to really mm. be responsible for, don't you think? Yeah. That's terrible. Yeah. That's, that's like a dictatorship. That's, that's like mm. England saying we're not having a prime minister or democracy anymore. We've got a dictator, and you just have to obey. Yeah, you know, I mean, sorry, I'm yeah. drunk. Sorry, guys, I am <laughs> drunk. <It's, laughs> I've had a, like half a <laughs> bottle of this stuff already, and was it half a bottle, Stu, when I started? It was about that. I think it's it? a, I think it's a full bottle, mate, when you started. Yeah, I don't know, but I've only got that left. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah. So I am a little bit drunk. So I'm a little bit rambling. I'm no. getting more passionate. Saying that, Dan, more passion. You're I've on. Got to yours, here, yep, yeah, I've got the fireball here, mate. Yep, I've got the fireball. Yeah, I'm um, just going to go grab a can of Pepsi. I've um, got the earphones. I can oh, yeah. hear you. Okay. Yep. In that case, while he's gone, I'm going to just remove him from the stream. It's just been me and you, Cam. We've got some alone time together. <laughs> uh, Kings <laughs> 4. Uh, in, in tent in to tent be. To be. That's a good James, name, James. You know, James. Honestly, his, yeah, his Instagram's incredible. Well, I'll have to look <laughs> you up. Um, James, intent to be. King's Tour was my first ever wild camp. Can't camp there anymore. Sad face. I've seen quite a few comments about that in the chat, actually. A lot it's of people... King's Tour, isn't it? Yeah, I've, I've, I've never camped there, actually. 
it's one and clearly i i won't <laughs> but you, won't um, know. you have no. to stealth camp oh yeah no. i just yeah no, it's not for me to look, over, look, look over my shoulder i'm afraid but no i think yeah a lot of people that was sort of been their first or, or certainly you know one of their first camps because it was it was so easy to get to wasn't it and it is the views from there are yeah. incredible i heard you talking to justin about it last night i did catch some of your live stream today kind of caught up today and i sort of you're right the, you. the views from but yeah the views from that tour mm. are are breathtaking aren't they so and it's a it's like a more starter pack isn't it yeah it's, yeah. Mm. <laughs> it really yeah. is yeah, I, I, it is. He yeah. was saying earlier that his first camp um, on Dartmoor was King's Tour. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that was the yeah. like you. I was at Fogging Tour, and you, Karen, you were up at um, Great Mist Tour. Oh yeah, and I yeah, was yeah. doing an Instagram mm, yes. live. Yes, oh yeah, yes. and I joined. That's it. You <laughs> I didn't mean to join and, and <laughs> Stu was My signaling <laughs> across the, the moor with, with, yeah, was, with my phones. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> so many people. Um, King's Tour is the place for their first world camp. And I'm sad to say that to this day, I mean, like two years, nearly three years into my journey of wild camping on Dartmoor, I've still never camped there. It was the very first place I visited, the very first tour I yeah. ever climbed my entire life. It was the very first tour that I yeah. wanted to camp at, that I intended to camp at, and instead I camped that night over at Fogging Tour Quarry. Yeah. Um, on the outskirts, mind you, not within the quarry itself, because that's naughty. It's even naughtier now to camp anywhere around there, but <laughs> leave that for another time. Um, but King's Tour is the Dartmoor Wild Camping Starter Kit, and it's such a yeah. shame to lose it. And I don't yeah. understand why, apart from it's my land, you can't have it. Mm. We're still going to walk all over it, mind. We're, we're still we're still allowed to walk over it. Mm. Not allowed to put some pegs in the ground. So Lord Robra, mm. um, who Rihanna Brown mentioned earlier, um, derived his fortune and purchased that land through slave trades. Um, yeah, God, I Sorry, mate, you're not a popular guy today. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm still trying to get through these comments and they're coming in so fast and I think really I mean, we're, we're nearly an hour into the cast already we've only got two points down and I want to cover a whole point with Karen whilst you're still here so guys in the comments I'm really sorry if I'm not going to acknowledge you right now um, but moving on moving on <laughs> so our I next am. topic for, for discussion is the new agreement between the National Park and landowners mm. Mm. But unfortunately, the landowners, it appears, will be having to pay a blackmail um, for allowing mm. wild camping on their land. It's like a ransom, isn't it, guys? Mm. Yeah. Which brings us back to really what's in really about uh, Darwall and Scotland and the gold panning rights. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Initially, th this whole thing was brought about because he didn't want people camping on his land. He was just after excluding people from his land to start with, wasn't he? That, that's where this whole thing came out, this whole shitstorm. Um, my and obviously, the court case. Acres. This is my 4,000 acres. Yeah, Get you off. can't come on, you, you, you can't come and play with us, kind of thing, you know, me and my rich friends. Um, yeah. And that, and then obviously now he, you know, he's come to an agreement to allow us to spend the night on his moor. Oh, it's shocking, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Um, it, it's, it's weird that now when he's involved, he's now changed his mind. It's yeah, almost yeah, like yeah. he's, he's, it's he's a like he's like a, for income. He's, he's like a dragon hoarding all the gold, isn't he? It's, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what, yeah. what, what was he called? The, the dragon in the Lord Smeg Smoke. Sorry, guys. It, um, <laughs> it, it, it was a smog, but we can call smog, that a Smeg. <laughs> yeah, Smeg. Now known as the Devil of Dartmoor. <laughs> The Devil of Dartmoor and Smeg. All right. Smeg. <laughs> um, oh, Christ. What are we doing? Um, so, yeah, this new agreement that's been reached between yeah. the DMPA and landowners, uh, I put out a... Um, a, a quick video yesterday when I heard the news that the Dartmoor has been opened up 
reopen mm. we're allowed to go back we we can go on mass and we can put up our tents wherever we like just like we've been doing for years um but later on as i mentioned in my introduction i started getting spammed with loads and loads and loads of messages about money exchanging has and this was happening on instagram on tiktok on uh, email on facebook it, uh, on on your group karen as well Mm. Um, and it was just loads and loads and loads of these messages about money, money, money. And I was like, well, yeah. nobody's citing a source for this. Is this just, no. it's just this propaganda BS that turns out that money is going to exchange hands. It's an undisclosed mm. and undecided amount of money. It could be as little as a pound or it could be more. <laughs> Um, mm. but money is going to exchange hands. Now, the, the yeah. DMPA is already pretty damn broke, you know? Yeah. They're closing I the visitor the, centre. Yeah, yeah back um, said that They today. don't have yeah. money to carry on operating in, in, mm. in that fashion. Where are they going to get the money for funding the right to Wild Camp on Dartmoor? And who ultimately is going to pay for that well there's been talk already D uh, the dmpa have announced that they are going to be um asking is it def defra defra defra, defra. yeah but um to contribute towards funding now that means mm. from my understanding i'm not too good with all of this so please bear with mm. me defra funding means that basically it will come from taxpayers money is that right yeah, because it's yeah, it's I a government know. department. Yeah, yeah, it, it's a government department, isn't it? It's, um, I can't remember what the actual acronym means now, but it's uh, Department for Environmental, uh, for Department of Environment, Food and Rural Affairs. So it, oh, yeah, it's right. part of the government, basically. So government. It, any money from that will be taxpayer money. I think for for me, just just to Sorry, put in just my one sec, what one sec, Karen, before you carry on, uh, I've just noticed a message in the chat here that I want to get to, um, but it's going to be a private affair. So can I leave you two to discuss this? I nip out of here and go and have a little chat with this other person in a moment. Is that all right? Okay, yeah, yeah, sure. All right, yeah. I'm leaving you two in charge, so I'll, I'll step out <laughs> for a minute. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just what well, the point that I was just going to make is mm -hmm. I for me this time last week that was it we weren't allowed to yeah. camp anywhere at all on Dartmoor and yeah. you think in the space of a week the Dartmoor National Park Association have met with landowners they've met with the whatever they called themselves the committee um, yeah. they've tried to come up with an agreement we've now got yes an amended but we have got an amended camping map mm. there are areas that we can camp there are landowners who are happy for us to camp on their land mm. and we don't know if all of the landowners are going to be paid money or if it's some of them and I just I I get it and I get why people mm. are like and we yes we still need to kind of fight it and we should all have rights we should all be able to camp you know sort of everywhere the land the mm. world is for everybody and I get all of that completely but what I don't want to lose is the fact that they've come a hell of a long way in a week and that we yeah. have made progress in that week yeah. and that things are a hell of a lot more positive now than they were a week ago and I just oh, don't absolutely. want to yeah. lose sight of that do you know what I mean I think yeah it's I I get completely why um yeah, why people are sort of still protesting and still wanting mm. to fight it and everything. But I think we also need to try to just acknowledge that actually they've done a hell of a lot in a week and we have mm. made a lot of progress. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Like I say, it's, it's, I think it's just over a week, isn't it, really? Um, but the, the organization they put into getting, excuse me, getting everyone together in that short space of time. Mm. and coming up with some sort of plan yeah it's not an ideal plan but it's a plan which is more than we had a week ago yeah. um and yeah we, we have still got a camping map it has shrunk i think i saw 18 percent roughly mm. um yeah and obviously a, a lot of the easily accessible areas have now gone which i kind of get why they've gone because 
obviously trying to cut down on the wild campers and emphasizing the leave no trace campers, which obviously we were anyway. Yeah. Um, but obviously now now these inaccessible places like Fogging Tour and King's Tour have gone. That will hopefully deter people from trekking across the moor for like you know two or three miles yeah. to set up camp. And yeah. I, I do get I do get that, but at the same time, it it kind of takes away the opportunity from the less able bodied people to get yeah, out and experience definitely. nature as well. Yeah. Because you know, yeah. someone with you know cystic fibrosis is not going to be trekking to Furtor, are they? No. <laughs> you know, no. they, they oh, I ain't somewhere trekking there they, with my hips. Yeah, yeah, same <laughs> probably. But yeah. There's a reason I've not been yet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Probably need to lose another two or three stone before I attempt it. Um, but yeah, it, it's just crap that it's kind of taken away those access rights and ease of access for people who want to get out and do stuff. You know, everyone yeah. is affected by mental health, you know, regardless of background, race, you know, sexuality, yeah. how much money they've got, all that stuff. It affects everyone. And for people to not be able to go and experience what the outdoors can do for their mental health. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because they might have, you know, a, a debilitate, debilitating condition or a disability that's yeah. been snatched away from them. And like mm -hmm. Dan was saying earlier, it's it's also like for the, the kids as well, you know, and generations you know, to come. Yeah. Um, obviously, Absolutely. you've got two two young boys, haven't you? Dan's got a little girl. Um, obviously, now that's going to affect their futures. Um, obviously, you've been out on camp to Ruben. He seems like he loves camping. Um, yeah, he so, does. <laughs> for him now to be able to go on camping still that that's a great thing in itself he's still got that opportunity in future but mm. the area you can do that in now is a lot smaller than what we've had previously yeah yeah absolutely. and that sucks and that, that shouldn't yeah. have happened no no it shouldn't it shouldn't right i'm and I... back and i have been listening um but uh as you two guys can see we've got another surprise guest in the studio at the moment waiting to come in so i'm just going to say um on the subject of this agreement before we move on that i don't want to pay for wild camping if i pay for wild camping <laughs> i'm on a campsite i want facilities mm. i want a toilet i want a shower block i want mm. someone to clean my dishes i want a bin <laughs> i want everything mm. you know and that that is what paying for something should entitle you to in in the realm of wild camping yeah i th can i say something mm -hmm. really briefly just to Go on. it's the cat amongst the pigeons i feel like i'm a bit of a baddie tonight um i think if the if the money from the permit was going towards startmore national park mm. and helping them mm. to maintain the park yeah. then i'd be happy to pay and also so claw backs from the money that they've had to pay for a lawyer for this court case. Yeah, I'm oh, quite yeah, surprised yeah. actually that nobody started like <laughs> a crowd funder or something to yeah. help I think, with that. Yeah. I, I think a, a crowd funder has been yeah. talked about um, mm. for an appeal because yeah. DMP has uh, basically said we can't really afford to to fund a appeal as it stands. Yeah, because so. we've just had to pay all the landowners <laughs> as well. Well, I, I think they yeah. had to pay for the court case, didn't they? Because if if, mm. uh, if, uh, if you lose, you have to pay the other person's fees, don't you? Or something? Yeah, or, mm. or part I, of it, something, yeah. Something like yeah. that, isn't it? So, I, think it depends. I think that's more of a criminal case. I don't know. I, uh, I, I know. Yeah. You know what? You know who I'd like to ask about that? Ash, West Country Wild Camping. He's mm. a... He's, he's a criminal prosecution lawyer oh, wow. for the okay. police um but obviously he doesn't deal in this kind of dispute but he would certainly deal he'd with know, but he, he'd understand who pays for what he's got to mm. get paid yeah, somehow, yeah, yeah. um right so the next person that i'm going to introduce um to the live stream um i'm actually quite excited to have her here She's a friend of both of you guys. I'm, I'm, I'm aware of that. She's camped with you before, Karen. And I believe that you and her have got a personal friendship as well. Is that right, yep. Stu? Yeah, yeah so I made her pizza. You made her pizza. I'm the only one <laughs> that did. hasn't met this next young lady who's going to come on. And I'm really excited because um, Becca has been so so active in trying to prevent mm. what has happened from happening 
She is extremely knowledgeable about everything that is going on. Her posts on Instagram have been an amazing source of information, not just for me, but for for pretty much mm. everybody. I mean, she's, she's got like, I don't know, what is it, 8 billion followers on Instagram or something? <laughs> she's, something like that, yeah. yeah. It's about <laughs> that, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. She, she, she knows everything. So I'm going to bring in Muddy Boot Laces, which I still think is a fantastic name. Hi, Becca. Welcome to the stream. How are you? Hey! Hi. How are you doing, guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do apologise. I'm in my little pyjamas. I wasn't going to join the live stream. I was just going to watch. And then I was like, oh, I'm becoming a keyboard warrior. I'll just jump on instead. And... Mate, Hi. I, I've, not, I've, not, I've not stood up yet, Beth. Look at this. Look. Oh, yes. I'm joining you with the pink, mate. <laughs> Oh man, I feel left. I've got out. a massive oversized hoodie on. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so comfy. Uh, I thought I was the drunk one. Um, right, so I'm going to move the subject on a little bit. And I know I haven't brought up any of the comments. Actually, I'm seeing one here that I want to bring up before I move on. And that is from one girl and her dog. She says, Weird, my last comment, Ari Defra has yeah. been deleted um i i don't know how to delete comments i don't know about anybody else i've been trying to remove the first two comments from this stream for ages when i was testing something out and have been well, able to it's watching um, guys so i yeah it's either either the feds are on to you one girl and her dog or it's a glitch <laughs> in the matrix i really don't know um i'm not against permits to wild camp but lots of people who have not money for it yet. Some people yeah, don't have yeah. money for it. Um, intent to be, I'm really struggling with that name. Uh, <laughs> permits is what I thought will come next. I know you're going to have something to say about this, aren't you, Becca? Um, yeah, you can tell. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> it, um, South Coast Outdoors, that's our boy Cole. He says, Cole, it's hey. what we do now to move on and get the most out of Dartmoor. Life on the Rock says, I'm Dean, torn now. Everybody. I've always stuck to the rules, and I understand that we have to stick to the rules to keep the permitted areas we have left. But there is a bit of taste in my mouth. I mm. love King's Tour. And he does, because his little avatar, his uh, badge for this, that, and the other on, on Instagram King's and, Tour. And, and, and YouTube is him standing mm. up above King's yeah. Tour yeah. there. He commented um, that on my um, video when I first posted it. He said, oh, like, yeah. interesting fact, my thumbnail is King's Tour. I was like, all right, cool. Well, then, I, then I started um, following him as well. Subscribe to him. Talking yeah. of King's Tour, has go anyone on. had weird experiences there? Because I swear that place is haunted. I'm not even joking. When you go behind, near the wooded bit. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Can't describe it. I was scared for my life. I'll go yeah. as far as King's Tour, and I hate it any further. When you go down, yeah. near the, walk that way. Yeah. Okay. It is it is <laughs> freaky. And I'm not really like into my whole ghost things, but I tell you now, mm. there is there's something going on there. Is, is that the woody <laughs> bit that back <laughs> the woody bit that backs onto the farm, kind of like near Vix and Yeah, sort of like, yeah, before yeah, that okay. bit, and then you walk along the footpath, yeah. Right, okay. Walk, walk, kill one day and have a walk down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go, go and get your uh, little, what are they called with the dowsing things and yeah. Oh, dowsing rods. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Freaky. Tours and Moors, who I think follows all of our channels. Um, so yes. Leave yeah. trash and or leave or trash anything they can track you down mate you're absolutely right it's not difficult to find out the responsible people for leaving trash mm. pretty much anywhere you've just got to keep your eyes open haven't you um yeah. I'm, I'm still going on quickly through these I, I want to get through not the stuff that is necessarily for individuals um as in any of us for uh the, the, the <clears throat> King's Tour was my third wild camp. I still haven't gone there. I'm gutted. Absolutely gutted. Right. Uh, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to tap on. Uh, Dave Outdoor says the money will probably come from mm. us taxpayers. And I, I kind of well, agree. It always does. Will. 
It probably mm. will. Right, let's move on to the next topic of conversation. Unless Becca had something to say about the pre or well, the current topic. And I looking at her face, I think <laughs> of course he does. Go on, hit us. Oh gosh. I don't I don't know because <clears throat> I feel like I'm gonna offend people here and I'm just gonna no, say it. Because you, before you say anything, before you say anything, all right. I am happy for healthy debate, but I am not happy for any personal attacks against oh, anybody gosh, on no. the panel or anybody in the chat. Okay. Yeah. So going on from that, say what you like. If it causes a little bit of a debate between us, then go for it. Cool. Um, yeah, I totally agree. I think, to be honest, I think it's really good that you've got people with a range of different opinions on here. So obviously I'm down the far end of the other side where actually I personally think the meeting that they've had, the DMPA with the landowners is probably one of the worst things that could have happened. Um, because within that, they're now accepting outright within an agreement that will potentially be signed um, and therefore potentially be law binding, um, that they also agree that the bylaw that has protected recreational activity on that land for decades no longer includes wild camping as that recreation. My first concern is what else is no longer going to be considered recreation? Bouldering? Is mm. that going to be? Bike packing? Biking? Is that going to mm. be? Horse riding, is that going to be? What else can slowly yeah. be dipped away now from our recreational rights protected by that bylaw? Yeah. Um, I, th I think anything... Is... Sorry, sorry, come. No, 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 Yeah, I was going to say, I think anything that involves um, stuff that they do, probably not. So horse riding... Yeah, like how is not. pheasant shooting a recreational activity, but sleeping know, peacefully in the tent? Yeah. Do, do, you know, do you know what's weird? I've just noticed. I grabbed a glass before from a drink. Yeah. It's got a bloody present on it. <laughs> 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 I've just noticed. How weird is that? Oh, you know what? I, I, I read somewhere or I, I had a comment or, or something on one of the, the, the mediums that I'm on. And somebody, basically, I read it somewhere that the way they get to us is the erosion of our mm. rights not the outright taking yeah. of them but little by little by little by little mm -hmm. yeah 100 percent. do we think that's and it's going to happen to the other national parks like this is what mm. people aren't it's realizing it's already happened on the national parks hasn't it it's already happened oh but it's civil it's civil there it, mm. it and this is this is the concerning bit okay so basically we I'll go to Dartmoor Festival and then I'll go on to how it's going to impact the other national parks. But basically, yeah. the issue we've now got is we're saying we are requesting permission. And therefore, by requesting permission, it's no longer a given right. I know people will say it was never a right before. You know, it was it was never legal. Growing veg in your back garden isn't technically legal. There's no law that allows mm. us to do it. Tomorrow, the government can come in, write a piece of legislation. We now have to we now have to ask for a permit or permission to grow veg in our back garden, councils will have to process that. Oh, look, councils don't have money. We have to pay for a permit to grow veg in the back garden. But that's kind of what's happening with Dartmoor, except from it's it's on a wider scale, basically. Yeah, so yeah, although yeah, technically yeah. it wasn't legal, it wasn't illegal, and this bylaw protected us to access it, really, under that recreation. By now saying these landowners give us permission because we're paying them, and not all landowners, there have been some amazing landowners who are just like, it's a recreational activity, um, but there are a lot of landowners who are actually saying, yeah, cool, we'll take the fee and provide access. So what happens yeah. when no longer we like can provide Darwin. that? Yeah, Obviously exactly. Like Darwin, because he's opened exactly. up store more. Oh, he's made he's money from this. Loads of money. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so suddenly landowners are now getting paid for permission. So what's to suddenly say the other national park authorities, Lake District, Peak District, don't suddenly go, oh, hey, do you fancy giving people permission? We'll give you money. Oh, you. You, oh hang yeah. on. No longer can these national parks afford the money. Oh, DEFRA can't pay. Oh, look at that. It's a permit option. And accidentally, by the acceptance mm. of this, we have a permit option where they have slyly and very cleverly taking it out for civil dispute to a legal dispute. Gotcha. This is yeah, my main yeah, yeah. concern. And this, I think, is why there is a lot of shouting with right to roam and stuff. 
um, because you can see the domino effect that could happen. Um, on a smaller scale, I, I can see how contributions to National Park, paying a little bit of money towards something like a permit, etc., could be beneficial. But in the longer term, I personally believe this is the door that's opening for access to take away those rights. And by mm. having okay. landowners give permission, like I said, could then lead to giving them money in exchange, but could then lead to we can't afford it, which leads to a permit. I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But it's just, and that's also why I'm concerned about Dartmoor National Park Authority and, and whether or not they are going to fight back, because by fighting back against the Darwells, they've now lost the right for us to wild camp across the land and it's had to become permission land. And I genuinely think they're Let's afraid just say that, that they had a... happened to the other parks. Timothy Leader has been a shitty lawyer in this situation. Mm. I mean, it, the, the guy argued, what was it, one <clears> of <throat> three points that were in... He argued one of three points and he ignored the other two. He he, he couldn't argue that um, the right to wild camp on Dark Moor was enshrined or protected by the law of any kind. He, he didn't even try. Am I right in mm -hmm. saying that? I mean, I know you, you're probably more um, clued up better than I am. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. I mean, I obviously, I wasn't in that courtroom, but rumours from before were that Dartmoor National Park was so heavily underfunded that obviously we've heard their visitor centre is going to be closing soon. Um, and because of that, rumour had it that they would be quite happy to lose certain areas of the land, like Darwell's land, um, so that there was less land to monitor. I genuinely don't think they realised this was going to be the outcome. If I'm honest, I don't think the Darwells realised this was going to be the outcome. I think they're brilliant. I think brilliant. anybody did. I thought everybody no. was, everybody no. was going to be on the side of, well... Yeah. The judge is going to be a halfway decent citizen. I yeah. was going to say, no, screw it. Yeah. And it was almost like, because before Christmas we had rumours that they were losing the case and then suddenly, oh, magically it's suspended until January. Um, mm. Suddenly now it's almost like that was mm. the only way the lawyer could basically enable that that right for them to stop yeah, wild camping yeah, yeah. there. I do find it Unless interesting that me... that people can now wild camp in certain areas there. Um, and they did release a statement saying that they didn't, their intention wasn't to stop wild camping. I hope that there's a little ounce of them that genuinely do, does mean that. And they're not just doing this to stop any kind of knock on consequence. Uh, but they've done similar things in Scotland. You know, if mm. you can manage to stop wild camping on your land on Scotland, like you've got skills, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one girl and a dog has popped up in the chat again with another good point. It's basically just reiterating what I said. Um, she says, I agree the solicitor didn't, sorry, didn't put good arguments forward. I've read the court report. I've read a summary of the court report and I, I totally agree with that statement. Um, mm. South Coast Outdoors UK, Cole says, so the only way is to appeal. The PMPA have decided to do a deal. Surely they have our best interests at heart. And this is what they think is the best way forward. Karen, what do you think about that? Well, so I'm, I, I'm up again so you can see it. Yeah, I, I'd like to think they do. But I think, yeah, I think... <laughs> I think I'm coming from the more positive, rosy end mm. <laughs> to Becca. Well, we'll like, yeah. like, oh, I love it, Karen. I love it. I love that you've got that, just, that outlook. I do. It's I, brilliant. I, I just yeah, without I, revealing I, too much, though, Karen, you have somebody close to you that is part of the Dar Dartmoor National Park Authority. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure that you yourself are going to colour this with rose-tinted glasses to some extent without offence. Mm. Um, but that's why I want to hear what you've got to say on this. Yeah, I just, I, yeah, I would just like to think that they have got our best interests at heart. Certainly from what I understand, they they have, they fought as hard as they can against the, you know, in the court, they, they wanted um, wild camping to remain and they fought for that to stay, you know, as a right for the people sort of thing. Um, and ultimately, you know, they... 
to go through that whole process and obviously they've come out and they're going to be massively out of pocket and can't afford to be out of pocket um no 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 you know i i feel like again from you know from what i do know that i i think they have tried their their best um their best wasn't good enough they that you know at the end of the day the, the decision was made in court it was taken completely out of their hands mm-hmm. and i would like to genuinely think that they have tried to kind of make the best of a shit situation <laughs> um in you know and it has only been a week it was literally friday the 13th was it, it was last friday because i was out yeah. on the bloody <laughs> well, it wasn't camp. even a week was it because it was thursday oh. that this this agreement got put into place and announced. yeah but it's friday the 13th was when the court the, the verdict was made yeah 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 yeah, yeah. 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 so that was that's because, what i mean and it's what and it's, what better yeah. day to announce it on you know <laughs> friday oh, the 13th yeah. Yeah. You know what? I've never had a bad Friday the thirteenth. That was my you that was my bit. first bad Friday now. the thirteenth. <laughs> you, you're gonna have them for the rest of the time, my friend. Um, oh, thanks, thanks. Hang on, can uh, Karen say something positive instead against that comment? Oh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hit us, hit Not us. all Fridays, Friday the thirteenth are the same. <laughs> No, no I, and not. the thing is, I, I had, and I was messaging everybody saying, I've got a really good feeling about this. So I really mm, don't think same. that, you know, and like, you know, cause I messaged you back, didn't I? And you were like, oh, I think there'll be some negotiations. And I was like, no, I really think we've got this. I was like, I've got a really good feeling. And then kaput. So don't ask me mm. to predict anything because clearly I get everything, <laughs> I get everything wrong with my little rosy little rosy glasses oh, but Karen you and I were discussing <laughs> the same thing weren't we we were saying the same thing and I think you 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 put a post up on your 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 Facebook group um and I said no nah, everything'll be fine you'll be all right everything will mm. just blow over and that's the end of it and as I said earlier in this cast that I think the people who are going to be most directly affected that being us wild campers, we, for the most part, had the opinion it was going to go the other way. It was everybody else outside of the wild camping circle that sort of said, now you're screwed. Mm. And they were Mm. right. Yeah, that's what I was saying before. People don't don't get it if they're not part of this, like, world, you know? But they just, were right. To be fair, I, I was I was part of this away. group and I, I was the one going, Oh, we're screwed. And I did have Karen and Stu going, No, you'll be all right, Becca. It'll oh, be yeah. fine. Don't worry. <laughs> and messages yeah. are from them reassuring me, it's okay. Even if the rally doesn't work, it'll be fine. It's good you're raising awareness, but it'll be <laughs> fine. <laughs> They've been so lovely. And I don't yeah, I don't think any of us you're wasting your time and your energy. <laughs> I yeah. think as well. I don't know. Like, did, did you guys realise that it was going to impact the entire moor? Because no. I, I no. stupidly just thought it was the Darwell's land, and yeah. I, I yeah. mean, I, I <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! I put my video up yesterday of when I was. So I went out to camp last Friday, and mm. got the message to see that. The, the the decision had gone in the Darwell's favour and my immediate reaction was like oh for god's sake that shit I really didn't see that coming but come on let's get on with the camp and then like started getting more and more messages going no mate it's the entire more with mm. immediate effect and me too like, me too I got told what? I was teaching students yeah and the head mm. comes in and goes just thought you'd want to know this and I was like oh I thought that would happen anyway and then it wasn't until I got contacted. I can't remember. I think it was like Heart Radio or something. And I was like, oh, well, I'll just camp on the other bits. And they're like, no. Yeah. And then it clicked. And I was like, hang on. I need to, like, get back mm. to you guys on this because I have clearly misunderstood. Next thing you know, I'm calling Tom. I don't know if you guys follow him, Weekend yeah, Hiker. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, all... yeah, yeah. And we're chatting. I'm in tears, mate. I'm going, oh, my God, I don't on a train up to like uh where was i going like bristol crying my eyes up on the train looking like someone's died because yeah yeah, i was like you karen just thought it was darwell's land Mm. yeah well yeah for for any (laughs) for anyone who watched my video there was ugly crying and snot and everything i was honestly i was a total mess because i just it, it was that the the realization and you can i think you can almost see it dawning the enormity Mm. of it and you know sort of it's just yeah it just came as a total and utter shock but I think you know I I messaged you didn't didn't I Karen and I was hoping I when I messaged you I was so hoping that 
you were not hearing this. Yeah, first you were the one who broke the bad me. news. But I was so hoping that <laughs> I was not the first because yeah. I knew how upset you would be. And unfortunately, that's what happened. I think I texted you a little bit later saying, Are you okay? <clears throat> yeah, because I was weirdly, really worried. The- the area that I was going to and I was hiking on and I was going to camp on is now no longer in the camping zone. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Mm. So did you that, camp there or did you disappear? No, I, it was flooded. And and then I got Daniel's message. Then I spoke to my dad and I was like, oh, fuck this. Mm. I'm kind of... <laughs> <laughs> and then walking back to the car, I was like, oh. <laughs> Anybody <laughs> touch yeah. this stuff? Yes. Yeah. Good. Good choice. Good choice. Oh, it's Cornish, isn't it? Amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it's Cornish. Yeah. Thought so. Yeah. yeah. Bloody they handsome. do a good vanilla one. I don't like the nice. vanilla. Do, do you know what they do? Like a cherry. They do all sorts of different flavors. They do coffee. They do cherry. The the spiced is the only one that I like. I mean, there it is spiced rum, and it's in mm. gold and black. I mean, you, that's classy as shit. Isn't it? <laughs> right. Um, I'm actually meant to be in the pub now. So. Daniel, I've got, I've got to go as well. I'm really sorry. I oofed oh, Karen, every, that's I, a shame. all the boys, I know you... the Xboxes, everything, and yeah, I'm going to be in trouble if I don't. Keeping teams off of, of Xboxes. <laughs> yeah. and, stuff. and I did say at the beginning of the cast that you would not be here for for very long and you've actually yeah. remained for a much longer than than i thought you would almost as long as we remained in the eu um so thank you very very much <laughs> karen i really really appreciate i shouldn't have said that i really really appre- i'm drunk i really really shouldn't have said that um <laughs> but thank you very much karen for joining You're us welcome. i really appreciate your time and i look forward to having you on again in the future i hope so you yeah. take care my love and we'll see you another time so yeah you thank say you. goodbye thanks, thank karen. You. nice to see you thanks, thanks for being a positive bubble of energy karen i love you <laughs> <laughs> one's best, one's best. see you later <laughs> hey guys bye bye oh Thank karen's you. great yeah. isn't she we all love we karen love yeah. so much she's such she's awesome. great yeah yeah, she's so positive as well. It's quite funny, like yeah. having both me and her on, because she's just like, "Oh, this is the positives," and I'm like, "Wow, the whole national parks can be screwed." Yeah, but you know what, Becca, yeah. like, you're saying those words, but your whole attitude, your persona that's coming across right now is like, like, like Karen Not yet. steroid. You, <laughs> you are totally, totally super. Like, wee, brilliant. Yeah. But, um. We should all I, get a camp really on is, together. We should. I was thinking that earlier. Yeah, we should. Do I that. am probably the most miserable, annoying person you ever and a snore. So rethink that. So I'm going to move the topic <laughs> along a little bit. Okay, I have to bring Still Dave with you, there, mate. Oh, Dave will be along as long as we do it in the warmer weather. He doesn't like the cold. Cool. I'm going to move this along <laughs> now. So um, the next topic for discussion is the Dartmoor Wild Camping Interactive Map update available on the Dartmoor website showing visitors where they have permission to camp. Now, before we go on with any further discussion about this, I did do a live stream last night about this with Justin Mm -hmm. Moore, so I don't really want to hang around too much on this. Um, But basically what the DMPA are saying here is that they have updated the interactive map to show the Mm -hmm. new borders for where we're allowed to wild camp and there are quite a few nasty yeah. i would say emissions and there's a few that i don't really care about to be quite honest and there's a surprising uh, few inclusions as well um but i mean what, what we're getting at here is omissions are as I mentioned earlier, the starter kit for wild camping on Dartmoor, which is the King's Tour, Fogging Tour, Swell Tour sort of area, that's mm. gone. I'm, um, yeah. I'm surprised the, Sheep's Tour still there, to be honest. If they, do, if they get rid of these access places, Sheep's Tour is just really easy to, to get to. You know what? I, I really thought Sheep's Tour by. was recently yeah. bought by someone new, though. I could be wrong. I could have got the wrong tour. Okay. But I thought Sheep's Tour was bought in the past year by someone new who bought it to preserve it. I could be okay. wrong. I could be wrong. Then, Don't quote me on scoot. that. Start tapping away at your keyboard and find out. Yeah. Because I'm <laughs> pretty sure it was advertised and someone was saying, oh, yeah, we should all chip in. 
and then some i'm i'm almost certain it's sheep's tour but yeah Stuart, Stuart will do a little bit of research on that one yeah yeah um, he's on it he's um, on it like sonic um yeah Becky, have you ever camped at sheep's tour no no i haven't really so, um, yeah yeah I'm i tend to be surprised it yeah, sold you know the what? option I'm... for 150 grand two old? years ago um i've not found a date but i found the website it was listed on yeah oh, 127.35 acres sheep's tour yelverton devon so someone's bought the freehold for it so they own the land that it's on as well oh get on right okay mm. Does it um, say when it went up to auction? 20, um, for sale by live stream auction on Friday, twenty first of May, twenty twenty one. Okay, so I and it might be the same if the rumor's right. The people have bought it to preserve it, which is interesting, and that's quite nice. That yeah, quite nice that it has access. Um, yeah, again, I could be wrong on that, but I'm almost mm. certain that was. Um, it yeah. would explore not, my sheep tour still has access, I yeah. guess. Yeah, not not like Vixen tour. That's one that can't. Oh, right don't. <laughs> yeah, I'm really <laughs> bitter about yeah. Vixen. Yeah, I've really, been obviously, obviously, buying Vixen for ages though, haven't they? Really? Yeah. 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 Obviously, obviously, Becca doing your all the tours as well, but trying to bag all the tours. You know, how do you feel about Vixen tour? Um, I've accidentally stumbled <laughs> across Vixen tour oh, before. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> Um, yes, yeah. <laughs> tripped and fell, yeah. eh? tripped and fell <laughs> oh, over the uh, over the wall. Yes, <laughs> yes, that one. Um, okay. Yeah, <laughs> and we'll leave it at that. <laughs> On the subject of yeah. sheep's tour, now, guys, I'm going to bring this up here because um, tours and moors <laughs> wasn't her bra, wasn't her bra and sheep's, sheep's tour. tour. Uh, I thought that when, bra, you, when, when, when you mentioned you found feet. half a bra and Karen said she'd come there, I was like, hmm, maybe. <laughs> was it, was oh, it no, purple? Oh, no, I haven't camped there. I haven't camped on Vixen. <laughs> oh, you mean Becca's bra? Okay. I thought I saw oh. it Karen's bra. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm <laughs> just wondering. I was going to say, I'm wondering if it was pink or purple, it might be Karen's. Who's <laughs> half a bra was it? Because... Um, what what tours and moors is referring to, Becca? Because uh, I'm pretty sure you don't look at us lowly guys like me <laughs> on YouTube. Um, back, I think it was like my second or my third wild camp on Dartmoor. I visited Sheep's Tour, yeah. and while I was there, I found of all the LNT infractions that you could possibly find. I mean, don't get me wrong. I found I found used tampons on on Dartmoor at near Great Links Tour. I found beer cans. I found tents. I found all sorts out there on the moors. But the weirdest thing for me was half half of a bra on Sheep's Tour. That's what that's what Tours and Moors is referring to here. And I I just that's want to amazing. know who. I mean, that's terrible. But also amazing. Yeah, but what happened to the other half? <laughs> I reckon there's a, there's a sheep wearing it under its little uh, milky like tits. A little hat. Yeah. yeah. I don't think you can say milky tits on the, on a live cast. You know, if ever I've got a chance of being monetized on YouTube, <laughs> it's, it's gone now. By saying milky it, tits, I mean it's gone just like the old camping map. <laughs> oh, <my> god. <laughs> oh god we can't joke about that so soon can we i know but if you don't laugh about it, you'll cry back so we, we need to yeah positive, true you know? say it's say the tears for tomorrow it's right point. yeah exactly yeah guys, guys are you enjoying this live cast as much as i am because i'm i'm really I am, yeah it's great yeah. i'm glad i popped <laughs> on i really am as well um <laughs> Karen says, Karen, who was just with us, says she's camped at Sheets Tour twice. Absolutely love it. Uh, live on, sorry, I should have put that up on it's screen. It's Dean's so. bra. It's Dean's bra. <laughs> <laughs> Life on the rocks, Dean. And man says, Sheets Tour is great. Feels like the lakes. And mate, you're absolutely right. I've never thought of that comparison before. But it really yes, is. Yeah, the, yeah. the view over Borough Tour um reservoir he's stunning especially mm. at sunset it is just i love that section. this world 
is yeah. amazing. It, yeah. Interesting Cornish, fact. Sheep Toll is the first on. one that I climbed. Sheep Toll is the first toll that I climbed. I then thought, right. oh, it'd be awesome to camp here. I want to camp here. I googled Sheep's Toll while camping and I found Karen's channel. Well, there so you I go. I started following Karen. <laughs> Yeah. Sheep's Tour was my first ever tour. I camped on Gutter Tour. I still want to camp on Gutter Tour myself. Um, but Sheep's Tour, again, it's just, it's like King's Tour. Sheep's Tour is like King's Tour. It's easy to access. Mm. It's it's a beautiful yeah. place I mean, to get a real feel of yeah. Dartmoor. I mean, the, the car park's tiny. It is kind of like, you know, a bit out of, you know, wiggly roads to get there. But once you're there... Yeah, but you like don't have actual, to park there. You can the park right down walk up there is like, it's tiny. It's mm. like from, from the road to the top, it took us like 10 minutes, if that. And we it were like, you know, we were stopping to take pictures. I think it depends on which time, side so. you go up. It depends mm. on which side you go up. Because if you go up on one, on, I think it's the west side, you, you're pretty much going up like that. If you go up on yeah. the east side, it's it's a lot flatter. It's a lot easier going. Um, yeah. I never discovered that until my third visit. So, <laughs> yeah, I thought it was a bit silly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's go on through the comments quickly. I really want to get to this interactive map update. Um, Karen says, ha ha, it was not my bra. Um, Reala Brand says, Please don't visit Vixen Tour. The person that owns it, I'll let you decide. <laughs> Bird shot is enough. I think Sai might have had a little bit of a issue with the lady that owns Vixen Tour. Um, <laughs> and he might have accidentally got just a tiny little bit shot. He got he got Forrest Gumped. He got shot in the buttocks. Yeah. It, it oh wow! <laughs> no, it, I don't think he did. I'm just just a <laughs> joke. God, I'm uh, so gullible. <laughs> <laughs> I literally fact check everything because I'm so gullible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a Honestly, I'm like, the amount of stuff I've had to fact check for this rally and everything, I'm like, <laughs> is that true? Isn't that true? I'll do a stew, mate. I'm like, research, research. What's going on? Just to make sure it's not rumor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bean says I lost a brown sheep's tour I got sore nips mate you need a little <laughs> bit of scooter creme or something like that um, mean, <laughs> probably some tits that are taking our land we had to bring up the subject <laughs> of my bra didn't we um, <laughs> I'm not going to lie you're mentioning the word tits a lot here <laughs> I've got a thing. Uh, Blaming uh, me for your demonetization. You've brought it on yourself, mate. Like, <laughs> you witnessed this, Stu. He said the word tits more than me now. I can't, I can't even <laughs> be demonetized because I'm not monetized yet. <laughs> <laughs> do you know oh. what? I am, and I don't know how to do it. So it keeps telling me, I'm so bad with technology, honestly. It keeps telling me estimated revenue, and I don't know how to change it. And they've changed my name to like Muddy Bootlaces 908 or something. I don't know. I can't get the money off. I can't change my username. I got Mysterious, like one of the voice oh. here isn't there. You want to be asking Karen because she's the only one. Yeah. Of three yeah. Of us. I think Rihanna yeah. Brown is monetized <clears throat> as well. So you, you want to look at them two guys, not us. We're, we're just peasants. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, where are we uh, Karen says don't forget to give a thumbs up if you're enjoying the live stream yeah do that um, Sheep's Tour is the only major tour I haven't camped on I will when I've done all the minor tours you know what Si mate I am really shocked at that I really mm. am because it is such an amazing place to camp. And you, of all people, I mean, I've mentioned it before in this cast, you are the walking encyclopedia of Dartmoor. You know everything. And you haven't camped at Sheep's Tour. I'm shocked. I really am. Um, moving on a little bit, I found some disturbing things in Fernworthy Forest from Intent to Be. A complete camp just abandoned tent all their clothes and huge bags of nos or nos canisters mm. I, I i take it you're talking about nitrous oxide and we're going down the realm of um too fast too furious oh, the, 
It'll be the, the cream canister things that all the teenagers do. They put them in balloons and then inhale it. Really? Mm. Yeah. You know, it, it was cheaper and easier when it was just cans of Lynx Africa when I was a kid. Um, <laughs> moving on. Uh, Do you know what? When you're reading <laughs> stuff like this, you can see why the landowners got annoyed, mm. can't you? Yeah. It is because uh, yeah. I, I feel like this is where I do a Karen with my rose tinted glasses because I actually haven't seen much litter on Dartmoor, yeah. um, and I'm there a lot. Um, obviously, I take ten tours groups and stuff out there, and yeah, yeah, you know, I found like the odd piece of Tupperware or a bit of a crisp packet. But the only mm. other time I've seen stuff is by car parks. I've never seen yeah, I mean any of the other we stuff went, that yeah. people are saying. Yeah, when we went on the King's Tour hike after the protest, I picked up about three or four pieces of rubbish within maybe the first mile. God. Which That's is shocking, isn't also it? Because it's quite an easily accessible piece. Yeah. I, I, I can see why, you know, that they would take that off the map because yeah. it's family. This is the there. thing, it, the it, reason. Yeah. Like, they need more funding for more ranges. At the end of the day, yeah. you drop a litter... If you're caught, I think it's like either 400 or 600 pounds, you are fined. Yeah. Like, yeah. if you damage property, you can get up to 10 years in prison. So there are already mm. these laws here. But mm. instead of, like, just get raising funds, getting more money to have more rangers to catch people, to keep the visitor centre yeah, going, yeah. to teach people about how to leave no trace and how to camp responsibly, mm. we're instead doing the opposite, where we're taking away these areas that people could actually mm. access easily yeah and instead of giving yeah. you know, info graphics like why you shouldn't have a fire there and funding rangers to actually make sure people aren't idiots on that land mm. we're now just yeah. stopping people who might have mobility difficulties or young children from camping mm. near a safe That's haven what, or an accessible place I was like early, but before you joined yeah i was saying that earlier yeah and um, and uh, it's it's weird it's like you could easily get around this by putting the money that they're probably going to pay the landowners into mm. having a ranger i'm sure there'd be voluntary rangers mate like, I mean, so many people love the outdoors. I'm sure they'd be happy to drive around and go, sorry, mate, you're not supposed to have a fire here. Yeah. Um, did you know that fire spreads like this, <clears throat> this, and this? Yeah. You know, like, it's, it's my, taking money that's yeah. needed and giving it to the wrong place. Yeah, my dream job would be a ranger, either National Trust or Dartmoor, or, like, a forestry commission worker or something. Yeah. So to, to, to get paid to spend time on Dartmoor, and yeah. have a range, uh, have a Land Rover as my company car <laughs> would be yeah. like, amazing. If I could just spend all time on We're talking about raising yeah. money, yeah. raising <laughs> this money to pay, you know, to help the national park pay the landowners, raise this, mm. raise money so you can have rangers to stop people being idiots, and then we won't have lost the land in the first place. Like that's yeah, yeah. where it needs to go. Yeah. That's the direction yeah. we need to travel in. Yeah, but I, I had a thought when I was driving home from work early, like with regards to the rubbish and stuff. It could be as easy as someone's like, you know, oh, it's cold. I put my gloves on, take them out of my pocket, and the crisp packet flies off because it's windy. Yeah. You know? It, it, like the, the rubbish that's being left behind, you know, it, it might well be fly campers, but, it, you know, it could just as easily be an innocent, you know, it's blown out of someone's pocket or like a kid is, you know. Yeah, to, exactly. Like, you know, like the kids one might say, oh, make sure you put that in your pocket. And they might have not done it quite properly because they're like, you know, three years old or whatever. They might have been tr trying to leave no trace, trying to you know teach the kids to be good, and then it's you know a gust of winds come and just blown it away. Yeah. And and accidents yeah. happen. That's yeah. the thing. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Especially in the easily accessible places. Yeah. You know? Um. But yeah. I think it's just a shame that I mean I I under I do understand why they you know Bellstone I think me and Mark two years ago when it was lockdown, um we had gone up there and we timed me. Uh, there's like an old story where it's like you've got 60 seconds how many fire pits can you jump in 33 <laughs> 33 scorch marks oh shut up really no it was bad it was terrible it was terrible i say that i say oh, no, I really? with the landowners people seem to think that because i'm up there shouting from the rooftops about it i don't empathize i do i really understand the landowners frustration but this is why I come back to the lack of funding, like education over privatisation. If there was a ranger mm. able to be stationed there, or even a voluntary ranger who was able to be stationed there to tell people not to have fires, that, that area wouldn't be damaged, and therefore that area wouldn't have been removed now from the new Dartmoor map. And, mm. and also, with that map, that's only for a year. Once the media eyes aren't on these people, next year, who knows what we're going to have left? 
because it's permission. Right, I'm going to go devil's advocate on what you're saying there. Um, go on, do it, do it. Love a good debate. <laughs> Well, I'm not, I don't think we're going to go into a debate. I'll be honest with you. I think you're going to completely 100% agree with me and you're not going to debate anything I say. And the reason I say that is because I think... Because I'm I, right. Because I'm right, yeah. No, uh, I think that us as wild camping YouTubers, that, that being primarily myself and Stu in this current chat and you as an social media or instagram influencer because that is your primary um output of information i hate the word influencer as well and creator yeah um i think that it is uh you and you and karen and cy and justin moores and Everybody else who makes any kind of content which contributes to the glamorizing of wild camping and the benefits of it and so on and so forth. Mm. Um, on Dartmoor in particular, because we are discussing Dartmoor, um, we have the responsibility to ensure that we are educating other potential campers on Dartmoor or other potential users of the land on Dartmoor to ensure that they are abiding by the leave no trace because you Stu's username me, literally has it Stu's username literally has leave no trace it the really start. does yeah, he's LNT as fuck um, <laughs> we have that responsibility we need yeah. to educate we need to make sure yeah. that the spaces that we wish to um utilized for our own enjoyment recreation although that doesn't bloody count anymore um and no we're occupying now it's it's, an, yeah, it's occupying, occupying yeah. taking up mm. residency and all that bs um, yeah. we have the responsibility to ensure that we're educating other people not only to the attraction of dartmoor but also to the uh don't want to say rules to, to, to the ethics of what we do, making mm. sure that people don't drop their used tampons, don't drop half a bra, don't drop tin cans or bits yeah. of paper or crisp packets flying out of their pocket, a little bit more conscientious about yeah. the environment. They're taking the time out to enjoy themselves based on the information that they've been given by the people uh, such as us who are saying, go there and enjoy it. Mm. Wouldn't, wouldn't well, I think when you look at a lot of the content that me, Stu and, and Cara make, like all of our videos will pretty much end with the camp scene where we've gone yeah. mm. no trace left. You know, when yeah. I do my, yeah. my long hikes, obviously I do wild camp and it's not in legal areas, um, but I make sure I leave no trace. And a lot of these videos will talk about, like you're saying about feminine hygiene, you know, I've done stuff about how, you know, to pack out the paper and pack I out the tampons. I love the way you've just done that. Yeah. You've changed my word, use tampons to feminine hygiene, and I appreciate that. I'm a bloke. <laughs> but carry on. I'm going to another dead man's and... Yeah, carry on. Oh, no, it's all good. But yeah, I, I, I talk about that and how um, things like tissue, although it says biodegradable, takes three to six months to mm. biodegrade. I have like a little cooler cloth that I use, and you probably see me talking about it sometimes on oh, my stories sorry? and stuff. A cooler cloth. So it's um, basically like a female piss rag. Um, you just wash it at the end of the day, it dries out. You don't need to use toilet paper. It's great. It's like a flying thing. Yeah, we just dab it clean. All right. <laughs> yeah, it's brilliant. But you don't need to leave. You don't need to use paper. You don't need to leave it behind. Um, but that is one of my pet peeves: is seeing tissue mm. on trail because you know it's a chick, and you know it's just like. Oh, you're yeah, nine times out of ten, when you're seeing any kind of toiletry item on Dartmoor, or, or probably pretty much anywhere, it's going to be, I hate to say it, a woman that's dropped it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be 100%. something to do with women's sanitary... 100%. 100%. <laughs> and, and I think it's the, because there's this weird idea that tissue is biodegradable and it disappears quickly and i will hold my hands up when i was younger i genuinely thought that 
Mm. Like I would just wee and I'd just push the tissue down. I mean, this is going back years and years ago. But yeah. I thought that. I thought that. So somewhere along the line, even though I was an outdoorsy person even then, I'd missed that bit of education. That's it. You know, it's just I, easy it's, it's to miss it's, the education. Yeah. And, and if go people with the don't know, yeah. And, and you know, I wouldn't have thought 10 years later or whatever, I was probably more than that now, I'd be talking about how I have a pee cloth instead, you know, <laughs> on a live stream. But it's. You know, I've it's, got a pee bottle, you know. Yeah. yeah. It's all good. <laughs> oh, right, yeah. I'm it's... Move, move on a little bit here. We've got so many comments to get through. I'm really sorry. I know I appreciate. I mean, Stu, he said me earlier that he may not be able to hang around for long and he's actually been around for the last two hours yeah i'll, I'll stay a bit um, longer it's fine yeah Back my husband's to gonna go sleep around 11 so um i'll, I'll have to disappear yeah. then as well. I'm, I'm volunteering in the woods quiet. at nine o'clock tomorrow morning so we need to get <laughs> some sleep well, tonight. We, we've still got quite a few points to get through so I've, i'm, I'm going to quickly go through some comments here um intent to be again Burnworthy is riddled with the remains of campfires and rubbish. Mm. There is a full English breakfast just left in a pan that quite tasty, actually. I like that. Um, <laughs> Not all those uh, well, tinned ones. They're disgusting. <laughs> this is a question from Dean, Life on the Rocks, and he says, what's the thoughts on a mass trespass like in the mm. lakes? King's tour, camp, perhaps... Do you think that would be a good or bad statement? I'm going to hand this straight over to... Go on, Mac. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Um, go on, Mac. My answer might surprise you here, actually, but I don't think a mass trespass would be the good. wise idea. Um, mainly because the land is now permission. You piss people off, they remove permission. Mm. This is why I'm fighting for no no permission land for it to go back. Now, between us lot, there are talks being had with landowners who are very pro the old bylaw. Um, between and, us lot, as in you, me, Stu, and, and the, uh, the viewers. people currently watching and yeah. whoever watches this in the future. Yeah, right, so, so the, 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 secret, thoughts are, <laughs> the thoughts are, hopefully, we can um, get a mass camp on a piece of land that they will allow us to do um, to raise awareness and kind of go that way um, to mm. show that there's support here. Um, Who is have you thought about X, Y, and Z? Who? Yeah. I'm not going to say. All right. Okay. In that case, tell me um, one thing. I, I, it's, it's very early days. It's very early talks. Right. Um, right. It's mainly suggestive ideas. Nothing is written in stone. Just batting ideas huh? back, back and forth, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, so nothing's well, let me written. Ask you so... One question about that, Becca. Yeah. Uh, does it include? Does it include Lord Robra? <laughs> I'm not. I know. Not a present. It doesn't. No. So it's not King's Tour, right? Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> um. However, however, if it does end up where the DMPA are not going to appeal. Um, and it doesn't look like we're going to move any further forward and the land has become permission, I imagine less friendly action like a mass trespass may occur. But isn't that what's occurring this Saturday, um, organised no, by... No, because right technically, right, right now, as of presence, the Commons Act still exists, and as that Commons Act, we are still protected by the bylaw that allows us recreational activity. Mm. And hiking is at present classed as a recreational activity, so therefore we are indeed able to hike as a large group across the land. This is why I wanted you on this live cast. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah... This, I don't even need to explain it. This is it. Um, the UK is not... Sorry, is not... Sorry. The UK not good, is yeah, I can see that one not up. enforcing laws, but fantastic at creating new ones. Mm. I, think, I think the general consensus is that we don't have any faith in the law. We don't have any faith in the government we don't have any faith in society as a whole 
And but people aren't willing to fight anymore. This is this is the thing. There are so many people, and I'm sorry if this offends the people in the chats, but there are so many people saying, I'd be happy to pay for a permit. And just for any new watchers that have joined on onto this, what I've been trying to explain is, is how the, a permit for Dartmoor isn't just a permit for Dartmoor. And one of the big concerns is that, you know, at present, they're asking DEFRA to pay some money to pay the landowners to give us permission. What happens when DEFRA, the government or charities can't afford or don't want to pay Dartmoor National Park Authority? It will come to a permit. Mm. We as the public have to pay. Other national parks mm. suddenly might go, oh, we should do permit options here. Oh, yeah, that would be a good idea. Maybe we actually just, instead of having it as a civil issue if you trespass and it's a civil law so instead the landowner has to take you to court how about we just see if we can get blanket permission anyway oh look the mm. landowners have signed a deal to give you permission anyway and it's okay the government are going to fund it and then slowly government don't fund it you have to pay for a permit and what once was civil land where you just get asked to move by a landowner or potentially in trouble with that landowner now has become a legal issue because an agreement has been signed and you now have to have a permit or they just strip the land altogether. And th this is mm. this is my argument with the permit option, really, um, that I kind of just for anyone who's new in the chat to kind of be aware of why a lot of us are going to march on Saturday is to raise awareness of mm. of the domino effect. And the only way you can raise awareness is to get into the media and to get into the media. You have to do something big like a mass group hike. And yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Oh, I agree with that. I agree with that. Um, there was another message which I've just lost. I was about to highlight it, but I've changed the topic of discussion to um, the funding for this this change, this BS, basically. Um, I want to address Cornish Cowboy, Carlo Camps. Do you remember... On Great Miss Tour last year, I pushed you and a friend off as I had the best pitch on a very <laughs> windy, wet and dark. Oh, I don't know if something's gone wrong here, but I've lost sound. Have you lost yeah, sound? Yeah, me too. Yeah, I can't hear him. I think his earbuds have run out of um, battery or something. Oh, dude, you're um, always tapping. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I just want to take this opportunity while everyone's here. Um, if you've not already heard, there's a song called The Commons by Beans on Toast. Um, he wrote it for Right to Rome. If anyone's not heard it, go listen to it because it's amazing. And it basically sums up this whole thing perfectly. The yeah. Commons by a guy called Beans on Toast. Everyone go search for it after this uh, live stream. It's great. It's a good song. We were going to play that it actually is. at the rally. Yeah, yeah but we yeah. were worried uh, that it would be too antagonising. Yeah, I, I had it on my phone ready on Spotify to play it, but I thought, should I, shouldn't I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I was going to bring, bring my speaker as well and have it playing on repeat on the walk. But, yeah, well, we had speakers and stuff there <laughs> yeah. as well, but we oh, kind of thought okay. yeah. it could go either way with that. And we were like, we'd rather it just be boring and people have like a 40-minute yeah. interval then yeah. people kind of go mental because all it would take is yeah. one person to create a horrible chant. The BBC yes. were there, like it's that could ruin yeah, it all. Yeah. Exactly, oh, yeah. mate, we uh, can't hear you still. We can't hear uh, you. Should we? Oh, do you know what, Stu? We should do that thing where like he mimes and we just like have a conversation <laughs> and, and, and dub be... over. <laughs> you two are fantastic. Brilliant. <laughs> I could read what you just said, and you said the SH sugar, sugar, honey, iced tea thing. I swear he did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Well, we're it. Should we take over the comments? Does anyone want to ask us questions? Yeah, go for Let's it. Have a little look. Let's see. Yeah. Chuck us a question in the chat if you want to ask us a question. Can be anything, can be about the hike on Saturday, tomorrow. Oh, with that, if people are attending, um, they're asking individuals to go to Ivy Bridge to park, and then there's a, a group walk heading in around 10.40, or there will be shuttle buses. Can you buses. hear me again, guys? We can. Yeah, can yeah. Excellent. Right. I, I know what you were just saying about asking questions and all the rest of it. I still want to address 
Cornish cowboy really quickly. What are you? Oh drinking? no, we just didn't know how long you would be, darling. No, we were cool. killing time, to be honest. No one asked uh, anything anyway. What, no one cares. What, what are you drinking, Becca? <laughs> Water, mate. Oh, sucks. Right. Okay. I'm so, up at seven. Someone's no. got to fight for our. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I am me too. Start me too. Right. Do you remember on Greatness <laughs> Four yeah. last year? I pushed you and a friend off as I had the best pitch on a very wet, windy, and dark night, and you ended up going home. Um, if I remember correctly, and I am notorious. Oh shit, my background's changed. That was supposed to be like pretending that I was on dark <laughs> or something. Right, okay, so oh, back now it's the stars for the stars at our campaign. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, if I remember correctly, Cornish Cowboy, I think your name is Michael. I might be wrong. And the guy I was with was Justin Morris. He's also currently in the chat. And he's he's actually replied to you there. He says, Cornish Cowboy, that was me with Daniel. I hope you slept well, mate. Um, yes, I do remember you, mate. Um, I, I hope your name is Michael. And I'm, you know what? It's the weirdest thing. I don't know if you two have experienced this, but when you're out on the moors and you're just quietly doing your thing, you've got your camera and you're chatting and you roll up on a position and somebody recognises you, it's the weirdest feeling. It's like, hell. I've not had that yet. <laughs> I am Tom bloody Hanks, you know? Look at me. I was brilliant. I love it. <laughs> I feel like such a celebrity. And I find time, it weird. Because I'm a really okay. moody person. No. Like, yeah. So imagine <laughs> me being like, woohoo. I'm like that on every single emotion. Stu's had me in panic mode before, mm. haven't you, Stu? Trying to yeah, oh my God. Yeah. Like, and it is, isn't it? I'm an extreme of every emotion. I don't seem to have yeah. a middle thing. And so I, I remember I, I was doing West Highland. Feeling. Yeah, it's bad, mate. So I was doing West Highland Way a year ago, two years ago, a year ago, with yeah, a guy that yeah, I was seeing. Oh, we. He had, he had chosen the worst pitch, mate. Like, I was like, we don't want to pitch there. It's long grass. There'll be ticks. Pitch there, didn't we? Covered in ticks. I was not happy, lass. So we were having a little <laughs> argument. Right, going going over, is it Cox Hill or something? Up at, like, day uh, two yeah. of, of West Ham Way. And someone goes, Muddy Boonaces, big fan. And I'm here, like, going, you're a fucking dick. I've got all these ticks on me. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I'm just like, oh, hi. In the case of public persona, you just ruined your celebrity oh status God. by <laughs> calling someone a dickhead. I get it a I lot as it. well. Like, I oh, saw you in Asda today because I wear my green hat a lot. Saw you in Asda today. Oh, yeah, do I look like a moody <laughs> bitch? Yeah, I thought so. Didn't want to talk to you. Yeah, yeah, right decision, mate. Like, he's <laughs> bad. Yeah. Well, yeah. You, if you ever get recognized, me? Oh, you can no. say no, isn't it? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I've, I've got like 320 followers or something at the minute, and half of those are from like years ago when I used to make bushcraft videos. Right, right, <laughs> so, right. You know, the yeah, I've never been spotted. Yeah. <laughs> the, the first time I got recognised, I was actually really humbled by this, and this is an amazing experience. I and mean, it's one of the reasons why we need to be able to carry on camping, but more in my opinion, is because... It's about inspiration. Now, I was down not on Dartmoor. I was all the way down on the Helston River. I was down at my, one of my favourite places in Cornwall for, wild, for, well, for camping. Uh, oh, is that where we were going to go? Yeah, Tremaine yeah, Key. Yeah, yeah. Tremaine yeah. Key. Beautiful. You can have a campfire. It's, it's lovely. It's right on the River Helford. It's, it's absolutely mm, stunning. Looks nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's the first video I saw of yours, I think. Yeah, yeah. So... I was yeah. walking, uh, I, it was my second time there, and I was waiting for my buddy to arrive, and me and Dave were just, we, we got set up and went for a little walk, and we bumped into a a, a couple, uh, I don't want to be offensive, but because they might be watching, because they subscribed to me, um, I was just going to say it anyway, um, bearing in mind, lovelies, I'm drunk, mm. um, yeah, an elderly couple who were testing out their gear at Tremaine Key, preparing for their first wild camp on Dartmoor. And they were going to visit the same place. Don't say the place. Don't say the place. Or Tremaine. Why not? Because it's one of the very few places 
for <laughs> Oh wow! Well. Everyone in the chat, here you go. It's one of the few places years. that you can legally wild camp by the National Trust in Cornwall. By the National Trust, and you no, can no, no, camp it's a notorious docking spot. Don't go there. It's a yeah, don't. Spot. don't go, guys. Dogging yeah. all the time is like massive dogging. Yeah. I, I go dogging yeah. there all the time. If um, anyone tags that place, I tell them off. I'm yeah. like, I don't want to lose that place as well. Only tell people you trust. Don't geotag. <laughs> It's lovely, and it's but beautiful. This isn't lovely it? couple down there, mm. and they, they, they <clears throat> Dave was running on my dog. Dave, come here, come here, come Back, say is hello. that why you and Craig won't come in? Yeah, 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 yeah. cool. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, so. okay. cool. Come here, boy. Yeah, oh. I've been there a few times. Um, I don't know if you follow, do you follow East Anglian Bushcraft? No. Oh, he's good. He's he's yeah, he's mm. brilliant. So that's where I took him. We did a hammock camp. So yeah, legend. I love it. It. This is my boy Dave. This is the other half of Kerry. Oh, Kerry. there he is. He's my boy. He's really, really Davey tired. Boy. Way past his bedtime, isn't it, mate? Eh? Dan, eh? is he a, is he a normal jack or a miniature? No, he is a jack duck A what? <laughs> a jack duck a yeah. Obviously. One minute. I'm just gonna get my jack. So this is Dave. while you're having a dog break. I have to say, I'm gonna have to disappear because my housemate has got um an exam tomorrow morning, and I said to her I'd disappear by 11, and it's now 11 past 11, which is a really positive number, um, to disappear you know on. So it's two, it, it's two hours and 11 minutes into. I just saw your dog's dick. Um, it's two minutes and eleven <laughs> minutes. Sorry, two hours, eleven minutes, and eleven seconds into the cast, and we're, we're not even bloody halfway. Stu, are you could stick with me, mate? Right? Uh, I'll stay for a bit longer, um, mate, if you want. Yeah. All right. I mean, if there's let's any go. quick fire questions you want to throw at right, me so about Dark War, just, just before just I down the questions. Um, just if there's any there more insight needed, and then I'll leave. Who wants to ask Becca? Muddy bootlaces, a quick question. We've still got 20 people watching, so I'm hoping we'll have at least two. Two questions, please. I'll just scroll right down to the bottom of the chat. So hit them, hit them up now. No, Becca, nobody wants to. No, talk to it's you. all Sorry, good. That's um, all right. No, don't worry. <laughs> give them, give them a They're fed up with me ranting on about it anyway. See my face okay, on I'm Facebook. hoping, I'm I'm really hoping that you're going to join me for another live cast in the near future. I did briefly touch upon this earlier. Um, and the reason being is because I think you and I are, are equals in our opinions, but at the same time, polar opposites. And I think that is a fantastic way to hold a conversation and mm. i'm really hoping that you're going to join us again so before you go becca thank you so much from the bottom of my really dark miserable heart <laughs> i am so <laughs> grateful for you joining us here tonight on the live cast yeah. and sticking around for as long as you have i really appreciate oh, it oh no worries thank you very much Thank you. For really having thanks, uh, yeah. be before you go, do you want to mention what's happening tomorrow at Dartmoor? Yeah, sure. Um, so tomorrow, um, a group called the Stars at Ours and Right to Rome are leading a mass hike across um, Dartmoor and onto Star Wars land. They're actually doing like a theatre performance at a point with it. They've made this giant puppet of old Crocken as well. Um, oh, no, yeah. Is, yeah, it's quite interesting. I'll let you fill people in about the tale of old Crocken. Um, but yeah, ba basically they're, they're doing that. So yeah, people are being advised not to park in the village of Cornwood just because there's not loads of, of parking. There's going to be shuttle buses from Ivy Bridge or a group hike from Ivy Bridge at 10.40. Um, people will be leaving Cornwood at 1.30. There is a cafe called the Hedgerow Cafe. I think they're a vegan yes, cafe. Yes. We were supplying food to anyone who's there. Yeah. Like yeah, there's yeah, another yeah. yeah, there's another coffee shop that's doing free coffees and stuff. Um, it's just a massive communities are coming together really to support yeah. it. What we do ask is you yeah. leave no trace. There are gonna be me and Mark are gonna be there with our bin bags and our litter pickers, stopping people gluing themselves to the fence, but also picking up any trash um, yeah. that may fall behind. Um, and yeah, it looks like the weather's good, it looks like it'll be a lovely hike. Um, police have been involved 
Um, so it is all legal. Yeah. It is all above board. It is not currently group hiking is protected by the bylaws, so we can do it. However, we do okay. ask that if you bring any musical instruments banging on a drum, you shut up when we're around animals. Please don't disturb the livestock. You can get like a massive fine for disturbing livestock. So, uh, mm. yeah, don't disturb the livestock. Mm. Um, don't throw eggs at Unless you're shooting it with a shotgun. Respectful, yeah. you know. <laughs> pro, pro, and what? Sorry? Don't throw eggs at the Darbles house. We go via their land and um, some farms that they have. So, yeah, I'm not um, going back and picking up all the little bits of eggshell to ensure that I leave no trace. It's not going to happen. Yeah, that, no, uh, no, no. Yeah, I've, I've, I've just seen Coach Cowboy's uh, comment. Are you single? Sorry, Mike, I'm married, mate. <laughs> oh yes, you got married, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, congratulations, by the way. I don't think I. I actually... Thank you, buddy. I don't think I actually uh, congratulated you on your marriage, mate. Welcome to Thank a you, lifetime mate. of misery and despair. <laughs> oh, no, you haven't met Vicky. She's amazing. She is. She is I hope yeah, so. she, to be fair, yeah. she, she is amazing. She will be she making her awesome. life misery. No, I'm joking. On that I think, note, okay. I think she might be watching at the minute, so be, so be nice to me. <laughs> oh, I love her. I think she's absolutely wonderful, and you should she teach is, her yes. more on things generally yeah. i don't know what but yeah, yeah. She, she is yeah. awesome and, and uh, becca's matter as what well so, yeah Sorry, what was the name? so she's awesome and becca's matter last summer as well when uh, we went away for vic's birthday yeah right, right. joined them for pizza pizza night we and then did. we yeah, went um, to break theater yeah did, oh god guys awesome. it's quarter past i'm gonna have to go because she's got, Before a, you she's go, got Becca, one yeah, one no, last thing one very 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 last thing becca yeah all right so you are known for um, not only doing what you do, but particularly your cooking on mm. on your camps. Yes, am I yes. right? Yes. Right, so, Becca. Um, it, oh, oh, I've found you. Oh, oh. Moved you from the live stream. <laughs> so I am a meat eater. Okay. I love meat. I love chowing right. on carcasses. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I absolutely <laughs> love it. I adore it. It's like the best part of my day. So, excusing me for that, right? There's mm -hmm. one thing that I've noticed that from, from watching your, uh, looking at your Instagram, your reels, your YouTube, you cook some amazing food while you're out. Oh. Welcome. <laughs> All right. And, I really hope that at some point in the future that we can have a group camp and you yeah. will let me sample some of your weird, bizarre, eclectic, delicious, wonderful, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. wonderful, yeah, all of that <laughs> vegan food. I really want to try it. Um, Good for the planet yeah. and your health. But yeah. Don't exactly. tell my wife. We're, we're, we're far enough into this cast now, two hours and 17 minutes. That my wife is not going to watch. She she won't give a shit. So, um, I <laughs> hey, really there's plenty of things you eat on a daily basis that are vegan. The bread you have yeah. is vegan. Oreos yeah, vegan. Beer um, you're drinking is probably eat, vegan. Oreos, Chicken mushroom pot noodles, noodles vegan. Yeah, they are. Pot noodles, they are. I love the beef and tomato and the doner kebab ones. They're my favourite at the moment. Um, yeah. <laughs> we will meet up for a cook up at the key that we shall not mention the name of. Yes, that sounds, that sounds absolutely good. perfect. Yeah. I'm going to take Done. a couple of my buddies. Signed deal. Up. Fist bumped on that one. Absolute <laughs> fist bump. Right. So, Becca, thank you so much for joining us. I really, really appreciate your time. And I know that you're feeling a little bit nervy about jumping in on a wild, uh, sorry, on a wild camp, on a live broadcast. And I really, really appreciate it. It's yeah. been absolutely yeah, fantastic. Yeah, thanks for joining us, Becca. Oh, thank so, you guys for having me. Again. I just want to say as well, thanks for everything that you, Mark and Tom and everyone else have done so far. Uh, we've done an amazing absolutely. job. And thank yeah. you for everything. We really do appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. So thank you. Oh, thank Absolutely. you. Cheers, guys. Have a lush evening. Bye. Thank you very bye. much. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. You can take yourself out now. That's it. Yeah. Right. Okay, so it's just <laughs> me and you now, yeah. Stu. Uh, it's just the two of us. And I really want to yeah. get through the rest of this cast. We've got yeah, still let's, let's so much more. to cover. 
questions. So and stuff at the moment, different. we're on the, the, the subject of um, what, what what is it? I mean, I really am drunk. I really shouldn't be doing this. I shouldn't, shouldn't drink while I'm doing this. The fact that <laughs> individual wild this campers so far, so. <laughs> the fact that individual wild campers will not have to pay, and this is at the point of I think. What have they got? The point of sale? Delivery or and something? Sale, point yeah. of delivery. But we'll need... Uh, that's a really great term, isn't it? At the point of delivery. Um, but we'll need to follow the guidelines of the map and how how will this be funded? So at the point of delivery suggests that, you know, we're not handing over cash to somebody as we enter Dartmoor. But it does suggest mm. that we are... that we may have already handed over that cash. Mm. All right. Does... Um, I mean, technically, if the money's going to come from DEFRA, then that's a government department, which means we've paid for it anyway. It's coming out of our, t- yeah, oh, out of our taxes, that... isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I had a thought earlier. Um, you know, obviously, we all pay council tax, don't we? You know, Devon, Cornwall, you know, that area, and we all use them more and, and love them more. I mean, Obviously, some of the money that we give to other parts of the council, like say Cormac, for instance, what do they actually do with the money? Because obviously, potholes in the state of the roads and stuff. They could, if they're given, being given this money, not do anything actual worthwhile with it, they could give some of the council tax to, you know, the Dartmoor National Park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Couldn't they? Because it, it's. Is it you know, fair, though, for everybody who pays council tax? Mm. To contribute to our, as in you, as mm. in me, as in Karen, as in Sai, as in uh, Becca, and everybody yeah, who's yeah. in the chat at the moment who has an invested has an investment in wild camping on Dartmoor. Is it fair for yeah. everybody who might not use Dartmoor for the purposes of wild camping? Mm. To pay a contribution yeah. of their taxes to mm. what is effectively very, 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 very mm. wealthy people who already own a large amount of land that we want to camp on. That yeah, l- let's face it's... it. Essentially, they don't do anything. I mean, these guys. This, yeah. this is wild land. They, they don't cut the grass. They don't. They don't provide facilities. <laughs> yeah. They, don't, yeah. they don't come along and, and make sure that the cows aren't eating the guy lines of our tents. Is it fair for everybody else to be making a contribution? Yeah, I mean, it's a tricky one because obviously one of the biggest landowners on Dartmoor is Southwest Water. And everyone right. uses that anyway. So we're giving them money every year. And then obviously now Dartmoor is going to have to pay money to them being one of the landowners to allow access to the moor. So we're giving them money anyway. So I don't know if they could come to some sort of agreement where they divert the money that they're being given to actually being of benefit to the moor and to the people that use it. But it's not going to be of the benefit yeah. to the moor and the people, is it? This is a charge that's mm. being paid to the landowners. Hmm. I mean, are they going to be obligated to, say, say Darwall? I mean, he's the name that yeah. we all know at the moment. So Alexander Darwall and his wife, he's, is he going to be obligated to reinvest the um, stipend that he receives through taxpayers' money um, for the benefit of wild campers? Is he going to be obliged mm. to reinvest that into making sure that wild campers have a better experience. Do you see that? I mean, is that going to yeah, be... Yeah, yeah. Is that something that's going to happen? I mean, the fact that he has opened up Stormmoor to wild camping mm. after the announcement that money's going to exchange hands, mm. does that show to you or anybody else in the chat that Alexander Darwell and his wife are going to reinvest that money that they receive into yeah. the moors <laughs> in, or their proportion of the moors, there is going to be a benefit to the people that are using it. 
I, I don't think they would really. Um, the simple answer is no, yeah. isn't it? No, no. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'd, I'd like to think they would, but yeah, the prob- probably. I mean, this is a guy who's <laughs> over a thousand quid for allowing people to shoot pheasants mm. on his land on Dartmoor. Mm. Yeah. Is he? I mean, look at it. The cost usually of shooting pheasants per day is about three hundred mm. quid. He's yeah. charging people a grand of money, mm. of hard earned Queen's faces. He's charging people one thousand pounds plus, yeah, in some cases, for people to be able to shoot bang bang a pheasant. Yeah, and most and of those people is... aren't even going to eat the pheasant; they're just going to leave it there, aren't they? Yeah, they're just going <laughs> to leave it there. Fuck it, yeah. you know, it's yeah. just a bird, and it? it's a dead bird. Now, regardless mm. of what your stance is on hunting, the fact remains that he is making money from his land already. Mm. So we're mm. going to be contributing, us wild campers and every single other person in the UK is going to be uh, contributing a percentage of their income to allow him to do that. Is that fair? Mm. Is that right? Is no, that something that we as wild campers can abide <clears throat> by? What do you mm. think? Ethically, morally, no, not really. I don't, I don't think we should no, be giving not, him more it? money. it's yeah, bullshit, no. mate. Yeah. It's yeah, it is. It's messed up. Right, so... Yeah. Um, right, so we've just briefly discussed the, um, the fact that we're going to have to pay. So I'm going to hit up this one. This is one that a few people have been waiting for. And... Let's let's just go for it. So, if you want to win a BRS three thousand T titanium alloy ultralight stove, which weighs, I, I mean, it's it's like less than twenty seven grams. Twenty seven grams. Some some yeah. places quite uh, quote twenty six, some twenty nine. Um, titanium alloy ultralight gas stove. It's about that high. I mean, it's minimal. And I've got mine here. One second. Next, you got one of you. I, yeah, I yeah. In my... Bring mine out, but I forgot. Yeah, D- this is my micro brew kit for like my, my day hike bag. Um, so it's right. so similar 50. to my one that I made yeah. a video. About. Yeah, it yeah. Tokes five fifty cup uh, C one hundred gas, a little tiny thing of gas, and then that's the stove in the bag. Um, it is 20... super tiny, super it light. Is... It is ridiculously small, um, super light, and it, it's like a little jet engine, isn't it? It's great. Um, it really is. Absolutely fantastic. And when you think about the fact that it is so small, so light, and boils water probably around about 30 seconds slower than an 80 or 100 or 120 quid plus um, jet boil, yeah, <laughs> it really is the absolute dog's bollocks, don't you think, Steve? Absolutely, mate. I mean, that that's it on the gas canister there. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. with the cup on top. That that weighs nothing. You're more prepared that, than I am. You really are. Yeah. And then I'll I'll just turn it on so they can see how ferocious it is. Boom. <laughs> it's brilliant, isn't it? Absolutely it, fantastic. Awesome little stove, yeah. I'm thinking, I think that puts out like about 3,200 watts of uh, power. I don't know what you, it, I don't even know what that yeah. means, but I'm quite impressed I, I, by I the yeah. sound of it. Yeah, it, um, it's a beast. So yeah, if you want to win the BRS 3000T titanium alloy ultra light stove that I featured in a previous video, a little there. I'm drunk. Video about <laughs> an ultralight cook kit. Comment hashtag fire it up. And remember mm. to include the hashtag itself in the chat box and stick around for the draw at the end of the show. Now, I'm not giving you a time for the end of the show. It is purely for the, the hardcore folk among you. 
who are really sticking around, who find this content to be informative and valuable. So what's going to happen here is at the end of the show, I'm going to do the draw. And if you are still here and win, great. You, you get to take the stove. I'll contact you. If, on the other hand, you are not still here, if the name that's picked out of the hat is, is, is not still present in the live chat, then we'll just move on. We'll redraw it. So you'll have a couple of minutes to, to respond. Dude, that is an awesome dog. I hope you bring it with you on our wild camp that we're going to do together in the future. I'd love to, so, but he's a nutter. <laughs> he's a nutter, is he? So, he is, again, yeah. I'm going to reiterate this because this is just for the hardcore that stuck around for the last two hours and 30, 30 minutes. If you want to win a BRS 3000T titanium alloy ultralight stove, make sure you, you comment with the hashtag. Is that it? Uh, fire <laughs> it up. And make sure you include that hashtag in the chat box and stick around for the draw at the end of the show. If you are not here when I do the draw, you do not win. Okay. So, um, where are we? In the grand scheme of things, we are talking about next. Uh, um... Where are we, Steve? Um, once again. Okay, so here we are. The fact that in oh, you got it. Uh, well, on. the fact that individual wild campers is in you and me and Becca and Karen and Tours and Moors and West Country Wild Camping and uh, Life on the Rocks and everybody else will not have to pay a penny towards the um, wild camping agreement. Mm. But we must follow the guidelines on the map and how will this be funded. Stu, I'm going to leave you to it for just a minute because I need to go to the toilet, mate. Um, yeah, no, so you carry on. And... Yeah. Um, I don't know what to say, really. Um, obviously, I did all that stuff anyway, the whole leave no trace thing. Um Anyone's got any questions while Dan's gone? Um, put them and I'll answer as best as I can. Oh, that sucks. Sorry, 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 mate. Jack Russell is buried on Dartmoor. Sadly, the Duchy took the tour he's buried on off the camping map. That sucks, mate. Sorry about that. He totally has, Kat, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, just just fire up questions and I'll answer them um, best as I can. Uh, Dan, Dan's got the gift of the gab, I haven't, obviously. Um, yeah, if anyone's listened to that song that I listed, um, said about earlier, the be Beans on Toast, um, the Commons, um, let me know what you think of it, because like I say, it totally encapsulates my whole feelings about Darwall and the whole Dartmoor situation, really. Pasties. Um, I do, but um, I only have cheese onion these days. I've stopped eating meat a few years ago when I uh, met my missus. She's full on vegan, so I don't eat meat anymore. Um, I actually worked when I first moved to Cornwall. I worked at a bakery delivering pasties. That's my first job down here. Right, I'm back, and I've got to say something. I've got to say Thank God for that. <laughs> I know you, you were bringing me. I, I was urinating. I was listening to you still on my earphones. Um, Tours and Moors asked, do you eat pasties? And you've just said, I eat cheese and onion pasties. I stopped eating meat a few years ago. Is that right? Yes, yes. Right, okay. Um, so let's be clear. The only pasty has steak in it. I don't care about <laughs> anything else is not a a pasty. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm a Cornish boy. Yeah, you're, you, you are a Cornish you, boy. You're, yeah, you're, that's true. you're Mancunian, aren't you? I I am Mancunian. I almost was Mancunian, a Cornish boy. Um, my dad almost. was a coal miner. 
No, it was on him. My dad was a coal miner, and then when his pit closed, he got off a job at Giva. Right, right, right. Um, but then he told, you know, at the end of the interview, the guy said to him, look, I'll be straight up. Cornish winters are pretty brutal. The wet, windy, you know, constant. My dad's like, oh, I'm from Manchester, mate. It's fine. I'm used to the rain. He's like, no, like a lot of people come down here. Then, you know, with, after, you know, within the first winter, a lot of people will move back up country. Um, just let your wife know that before you move down. So he told my mum and she basically <laughs> said, no. We're not moving to Cornwall. So, yeah, if we had took the job, I would have been the Cornish boy as well. But unfortunately, I sound like this. That's a great <laughs> story. That really is a great story. Yeah. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, I, I, I'm thinking that you've lived here long enough to have lost the yeah. um, Oasis accent and you've gone a little bit more Kearney boy. Yeah, I mean, I lived in Cheshire for four years before I moved down here anyway. So my, my mank kind of is a lot less harsh than it was. Um, and then obviously now my wife is from Bedford and then right, I right. work with with Cornish and a load of Janners. So I'm kind of picking up you know, <laughs> bit, bit, bits of, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm picking up bits of dialect here and there. So obviously I'm kind of changing the way I speak a little bit. Uh, but occasionally, if I'm with another northerner, it does kind of come out a bit more than it normally is. Do you know what's <laughs> funny about that? I've actually, my wife, Mrs. Kerner Camps, is a proper, I'm going to say the word proper because she's a bit more up north than you. Um, mm. She's a proper northern girl. Where's she from? She's from Hartlepool. She's a monkey hanger, you know what I mean? And, and Where's Hartlepool? She, she, She's north <laughs> northeast coast, you know, just below Scotland, around Newcastle area. Oh right, oh yeah, that is proper north, isn't it? Yeah, that's proper <laughs> north, isn't it? Um, and even her, oh, we, we've been together. What are we now? What what year are we? In? We're in twenty twenty three, so we've been together for yeah. thirteen years. We've been married for ten, and she is slightly starting to lose her <laughs> northern accent she really is yeah and it, uh, it's wonderful because i hear her every now and again she that r sound in a way we'll yeah go, uh, and i love it i absolutely <laughs> love it it's, it's the best best food in the world it really is dog's trying to jump up there we go buddy <laughs> yeah <laughs> what's your dog called yeah. um Officially, he's called Swanson, but we just call him Pig because um, he's he's got sorry, a little belly. Sorry, right. let me, no, 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 go back, go back, go back. Swanson. So he's officially called well, Swanson. Swanson. Yeah, but you call him Pig. Pig. Yeah, because he's got a little pig belly and he makes like snorty noises all the time. Um, there's a Do TV you show have called any Pat. idea yeah. the repercussions that you would physically feel if you refer to your wife in that fashion? <laughs> She's the one right. that named him Pig. <laughs> I'm just saying that you ought to be careful, my friend. Right, so <laughs> we're going to move on a little bit now. So we've had enough about the pig. Um, <laughs> so last call this is the last call for it if you want to win the BRS 3000T titanium alloy ultralight stove make sure you comment with the, the, the hashtag fire it up what is one word and make sure you include hashtag because that's what the software is going to be looking for in the chat box and stick around for the draw at the end of the show. If you're not here at the end of the show, and believe me, my friend, I don't know when it's happening because, quite frankly, I am absolutely rat assed on Dead Man's <laughs> Finger and what was it? Uh, JD Tennessee Fire, which we're going to have to buy some more. Um, if you're not here at the I'm end it. of the show and your name comes up, you will not win, quite frankly. So we will redraw for somebody else. Moving on in the topics of discussion now, we're going to do this as quickly as possible because it's just me and you left now, isn't it, Steve? Um, it is, yeah. So the next thing is criticisms. A little bit uh, from wild, uh, sorry, from. I am 
I shouldn't drink while I'm doing this the kind of thing. Yeah, I really shouldn't. <laughs> so, criticisms from <laughs> one of those who believe the agreement limits access to wild camping and it will no longer be free. I really wish we still had Becca in for this co- this chunk of the mm. conversation because, I mean, it it's true. There are a lot of criticisms coming from, I don't want to use the word campaigners again, but just generally people who believe this agreement that has been put in place between the DMPA and the landowners, whatever the hell they're called, um, who believe the agreement is to access wild camping and it will no longer be free. Free. Are we still free? It's a tricky one, isn't it? If uh, you I and think... I, mm. let, let's say going down, I don't know, three years down the line, right? So the DMPA mm. have run out of money. It's a theory, theory, theory. Theoretically. Theoretical situation. <laughs> um, if the DMPA ran out of money, they had no more donations, they had nothing in the bank, mm. Um and let's say, worst case scenario, you and I and everybody else who wants a wild camp on Dartmoor will have to pay for a mm. permit, much much like a fishing permit. We would mm. have to pay, say, a yearly subscription, arguable, mate, 25 quid, uh, mm. to be able to wild camp or camp mm. on Dartmoor within the purple permitted area. Which would um, be about that big by then, probably. Yeah. It, it probably would. <laughs> would yeah. it still be free? And would we still be accepting that? <sighs> to be honest, I don't see how they're going to be able to police it anyway. Absolutely. Um, because, obviously, the, the size of the moor is what 86,000 acres mm. and the Dutch own like 71 of that thousand. Um, I, think it, I think it's something yeah. like 69,800, but yeah, right, okay, yeah. Um, so yeah, j- just the sheer size of it, I don't know how they're gonna be able to police it. Um, short of having like heat seeking drones, you know, <laughs> flying over them all, all the time 24 7. Um, the chances of actually being able to, f- you know, find anyone and find them and detain them long enough to get the details off them and get the police to come and arrest. Them. I mean, the police can't even turn up to a burglary at your house. You know, they're not going to be like schlepping across the moor on a quad bike, and the off chance they might find two guys camping. You know, um, yeah. I-, I just don't see how you know when they said it- while camping is now <laughs> illegal on the moor, how they're going to be able to police that anyway, like. Who who's gonna fund the people to go and find these people camping? If the DMPA is running out of money, they're not gonna be able to afford people to patrol them all twenty four seven, are they? No, 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 no. And yeah. I, I, I would also add to that um, that you just discussed. Oh fuck you! I should stop drinking. I really should. I'm oh, sorry, everybody. I really should stop drinking. Oh, yeah, so um, I just said that was two hundred thirty-five thousand nine hundred eighty-six acres. So that is that is big. Of all of Dartmoor's massive mass of land, area, square mm. footage, meters, mileage, kilometers per mile, uh, square kilometers. So. Of all of that square mile. huge, yeah, it's pretty much 65, isn't it? It's 365. We're all, all pretty much all familiar with the, the Dark World 365. Um, yeah, of all of that land, of all of it, how much is viably policed? I mean, even if the DMPA or the land landowners, um, well, they call themselves the Landowners Association. Um, if if they were to invest all of the money that the DMPA are currently paying 
into the landowners in and therefore into policing the whole of Dartmoor. Mm. How much is it viably going to be policed by the actual police? I mean, let's say, let's say you were camped out on King's Tour. Mm. Right, so the, the most accessible route to King's Tour is by the roadside. I'm, I'm all right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the, are we expecting the police, when the, the DMPA or the landowners report a trespass to Devon and Cornwall Police, are we expecting mm-hmm. them to actually go out there, park at, uh, at Four Winds or, or wherever, Mm-hmm. Walk the what, two and a half miles down to the stream, yeah. cross the precariously, <laughs> um, the precarious stream, potentially in the dark because that's when we're going to be setting up camp. Mm. Um, yeah. and then walk all the way up to the top of King's Tour to say, <laughs> Here, mate, you shouldn't be here, you're going to move on. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, jog on, mate. Um, do we actually expect that to happen? No. Really? Do we expect that to <laughs> buy it? Is that a viable option for the extremely strained mm. police force in the UK? Or in no, particular, no. Devon and Cornwall? It's not, is it? It's yeah. not going to happen. No. So if you want to go and camp at King's Tour, even though it's not off the, uh, the camping map, I think that potentially in the initial five, six, seven, eight months, we are probably going to have Dartmoor Rangers or other people out there under the employ of the landowners who will come along and say, hey, what are you doing, mate? You ain't meant to have a tent here. This isn't on the wild camping map. Off you go. Mm. But how many crimes are going to be committed? Because let's face it, the majority <laughs> of wild campers are going to say, all right, mate, off we go. In which case, there's no aggravated trespass. Mm. There's no law yeah. broken. It's just a a, a civil <clears throat> wrongdoing, isn't it? Yeah, just yeah. Pick it, up this is, and off it, you go. Yeah, this is what Mark was saying on the group chat, isn't it, the other day? Mm. Yeah, if it's an ag- you know, if if you acknowledge that you shouldn't be there, and you go, yeah, right, fair enough, I'll move on, then it's not aggravated trespass. It's still then only a civil offence. It's not a criminal because it's not aggravated. They can't well, then get the police civil, involved because, nothing, because you're not refusing to leave. Exactly, mate. Yeah. What landowner is going to take a civil matter to court? Uh, the the potential outcome that they might even one percent lose. It's going to cost a fortune mm. if that one percent win yeah they're gonna do it are they they're yeah. gonna do it and and that that's when you know they might have been able to get your details or you know to trace you back to you know this is the person who i bumped into on my land you know at six in the morning as they were packing up their tent <laughs> you know that, well, that's if, if they can get the details to them prosecute you, which they're not going to be able to because, you know, a lot of the wild campers, they pitch up for the night, rock up late, leave early, leave no trace. So we're not going Absolutely. to be leaving. Yeah, you know, yeah. Identifying the stuff behind, are we, really? It's, I just don't get how they're going to police any of it, really. Um, but yeah, it's 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 a weird one, mate. Uh, I don't understand the whole thing. Mate. Uh, it's obviously early days at the minute. We're still kind of processing everything, but it's yeah, long long term. I don't see how they can police any of this new legislation, um, agreements, whatever you want to call it. Really, it's like, kind of just crazy the, the sheer, when you the think sheer about size it, of them all. Right, the potential, yeah. yeah. How are they going to police it? And I think the, I, I I hate to say it, but I think the the intention here is to. Uh, make potential, let's say, flyby campers just mm. say it's not worth it. It's not worth the hassle. Yeah, 
Do you think uh, that I maybe think, think, the intention yeah. here is to say that us guys who actually legitimately wild camp, mm. who abide by the ethos of LNT or Leave No Trace, they ain't bothered about us. Maybe they're mm. just bothered about the flybys. Yeah, I, I, th- I think a lot of it is kind of, um, it's just scare tactics and like talk really to kind of weed out the wild campers from the fly campers and to yeah, deter yeah, yeah, yeah. people from, yeah, I, th- I think that's why they took, you know, Kings Tour and most of Merivale is because it is easily accessible and it's going to massively reduce, I would think, the the fly campers and like, you know, the the, the groups of people that turn up, you know, the, the, I don't want to, you know, tar all teenagers say, but you know, the groups of people that turn up and get pissed and leave stuff, or you know, it, it'll deter the families with the big, you know, six man tents and stuff, which you know, turned up at Belliver and had uh, barbecues and things like that. If they think that they're gonna get fined or prosecuted, and oh, it's not in the camping map area, we won't go there because we're not allowed. The actual people who do leave no trace, you know, can s- still really going about it the right way, which we have always done. We don't need to be told that. Um, on the Dartmoor website, you know, which they're emphasising now, the whole leave no trace policy. Um, we will continue to do what we will do. I mean, I, I know I certainly will. Um, obviously, I'm going to respect yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the land as they always have done. I'm not going to suddenly start leaving, you know, toilet roll everywhere and and barbecues and stuff because that's just not the way that I've been brought up or the way that my whole you know outlook on life is really. Um. Yeah, I think definitely it will kind of weed out, you know, fly campers from the, the actual campers. Yeah, 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 I totally agree with you, mate. I I think that potentially going forward, that yeah, if if you or me or Sai or Karen or um, Dean or Carl or, or or any of these guys were to camp up on uh, King's Tour, for example, mm. and somebody's roll up on us and say, "Hey, mate, you ain't supposed to be wild camping here. It's not allowed anymore." We would be mm. respectful and say, "All right, mate, I'm really sorry. I wasn't up to date on the latest developments on this case." Um, yeah. Do you mind if we move on in the morning, or would you like us to move on now? If they say move on now, we would just pack up and move on now. Or yeah. if they say move on in the morning, we would make sure that we move on in the morning. We leave no trace whatsoever, and nobody would even know we've been there, apart from the guy that rolled up on us mm. and said, "Hey, you're not allowed to be here." Yeah, but yeah. the fly campers, the the bad guys in this situation, the ones who leave there, I'm going to say it again just because it is funny. Um, the Aldi tent owners, <laughs> those guys who leave their their scorch marks on the ground, their barbecues, their mm. their their everything behind because they had a bit yeah. of a windy or cold night and they weren't properly prepared. Yeah. Then they're the guys that that. The landowners are focusing on, and it's them guys that are up for the rest of us. And it's them guys that you, Stu, me, mm. Karen, Sai, and um, Becca, and everybody else need to educate towards yeah. the LNT, the Leave No Trace principle, mm. the ethos, which is if you carry it in, mate. You carry it out. So yeah, that. That, that's what I don't if get. You yeah. find it along yeah. the route. If you find a used tampon or half a bra or whatever, <laughs> pick yeah. that shit up, put it in yeah. your rubbish bag, and make sure that when you leave Dartmoor, that it doesn't remain on Dartmoor. Yeah. It's not a hard yeah. thing to do, is it? That, that, yeah, that's what pisses me off. Obviously, you know, living in Cornwall, you'll get this. But you know, when you go to the beach and you, you see shit on the beach... You see, like, and especially, especially in the summer, you know, when it's holiday season and stuff, you see empty, oh, you know, empty beer cans, you know, a, a box of beers, you know, the, the cans might be in the box, but it's been left on the beach. It weighs yeah, nothing yeah. 
compared but to what it weighed. They can pick that you, shit up and take you, it with them, can they? Yeah, yeah. They they, they, they dragged it down the stairs. Took it down. Because, yeah. That's yeah. either because they're too drunk to take it out with them, which in my current situation <laughs> is a little bit understandable, or they just don't give a shit. And it's the yeah. don't give a shit crew that we really mm. need to focus on because that is, in my opinion, at the very least, the majority. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we need to get rid of them. Yeah. We do. And we yeah. need to demonstrate to the multi millionaire, super wealthy landowners of Dartmoor, which they do mm. absolutely naffle with. That we as wild campers are actually the responsible guys who do give a shit, not only about um, where we're camping or maybe recording a video for YouTube or, or gaining likes and subs and comments and all that naff shit. We are the guys that actually give a shit about the environment. Mm. Would you agree? Totally, mate. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm totally, always, yeah. you know, whenever I go camping, I go hiking, I go down the beach, I'm always bringing stuff back with me. Um, and I, I, don't, I, know, I know I don't make videos that often, but whenever I do, I always try to get on video if I've found some rubbish. And I always highlight the importance of taking stuff with you, even if it's not yours. If, if you see stuff up there, take it back, you know? Bear with even me, if it's not yours. you carry yeah. on. Yeah. Obviously, you know, if everyone picked up one piece of rubbish at least when they're outside, you know, not not just on that mob, but anyway, if everyone picked up one piece of rubbish, you know, down the beach, in your local dog walking field, wherever, then the world be the world would be a better place, and it'd be nicer for everyone. And yeah, unfortunately, a lot of people don't get that and understand that, which is why you know we have the issue of fly campers and people are getting pissed off, quite rightly so, with rubbish everywhere on land. Um, but you're absolutely, absolutely yeah. 100% correct in that. Um, I I don't personally blame wild, uh, sorry, fly campers per se. Mm. During lockdown, it's a really weird situation for all of us. Every single human being in the United Kingdom and the world as a whole. Um, we all needed recreation. We all needed a break away from real life. We all needed a break away from you're going to kill your relatives and your neighbours by coughing on them. We needed a break from mm. that. Right? We need a separation. Yeah. And yeah. In, we, we were told we're not allowed to travel to Spain. We're not allowed to travel to Belarus. Mm. We're not allowed to go to... Tenerife or Ibiza or any of the other uh, super hot European holiday destinations. So people were in a position whereby they had to seek um, some kind of holiday from somewhere in the UK. Mm -hmm. So they did that. But they treated it, unfortunately, with a mindset of somebody else is going to clear up my shit. Just like yeah. you would if you were a, a five star hotel and you were mm. just sunning yourself by the pool, yeah, yeah, and, and all the rest of it. You, you, I want to blame them, but at the same time, I'm thinking along the lines of, well, it's kind of what they expect. They they expect mm. somebody to come and pick up the rubbish, and that. I, that's yeah. cool. the problem that, yeah. becomes a problem. When that is ongoing, past the pandemic, past the long, mm. the, excuse me, the lockdown, into today, when people are still camping out at Belstay, people are still camping out at the little bit of green that's connected to Four Winds car park, they're still pitching the tents there, and they're leaving mm. their rubbish, they're leaving their crap behind for somebody else to deal with. And that's either going to be one of two people, uh, well, one of three people. That's going to be the landowner. That's going to be the DMPA, the Dash, the, the, mm, the Rangers, yeah. National, the Dartmoor <laughs> National Park Authority, or it's going to be mm. the likes of you and me mm -hmm. and any other wild camper that turns up and says, this ain't right. Yeah. 
Right, so I can't blame them for that because the mentality that they have is I'm going to Belarus and I'm going to Ibiza and somebody's going to pick up my shit after me. Because that's, yeah. that's what people are used to. So the, 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 the worry here is that you and me and Karen and Sai and Carl and Dean and everybody bloody mm. else, Becca... We're all being tired with that same yeah. rush. Yeah, yeah. You are a bad guy because you camp on Dartmoor. You, it doesn't matter that you're a fly camper or a wild camper. It doesn't matter that you 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 follow the you know, the principles of leave no trace L and T, as in your your channel name, or not. You are the bad guy, and in exchange for that terrible behavior which is quite frankly terrible um, mm. we want some money for the upkeep and can you blame the guys can you truly blame mm. the guys you are or well, maybe not you but that we'll just say fly campers the fly campers are damaging or littering upon privately yeah. owned land Re regardless of whether or not you believe that land in the UK should be privately owned, I don't um, the fact no. remains that, <laughs> that land is privately owned, all of Dartmoor is owned now if somebody rolled up on your back garden and threw away a load of their let's say their entire, the entire contents of their bin bag <laughs> Onto yeah. your your back garden or your front garden, mm. how pissed off would you be? Would you want compensation? Mm. Would you want to say, "Hey, look, if you're going to do this, you need permission"? Yeah, uh, I, I totally Absolutely. get where they're coming from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not a bad argument, really, is it? No. Whether it be a a tenth of uh, a tenth of an acre. Or mm. four thousand or eighty-seven thousand acres mm. of privately owned land. Do you want somebody littering upon that land? Not at all. No. It doesn't yeah. even matter it, if if you yeah. as yourself are prepared to go out and pick up that litter, does it? Yeah, it, it is a tricky one. Like I said, obviously, when you've got four thousand acres, that is a lot of land to walk around with a litter picker. You know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I've got my claw. I take it with me occasionally on Dartmoor. I, yeah, I've, yeah, I've got yeah. a, a picker litter claw. I take it with yeah. me on on Dartmoor occasionally, and I pick out crap. A, a, a pitter um, litter claw. <laughs> I'm going to bring up one comment. Say, <laughs> the last one that's just been brought up. I don't know if you've seen it there. Uh, Daniel's <laughs> pissed and can't read the comments. Love. Mate, you are <laughs> spot on. I am absolutely <laughs> rat assed. I am not a responsible person to be in charge of a live cast on YouTube. I really am not. Um, I'm going to quickly... I'm sorry, mate. Um, yeah. So, we have been on... Yeah. Life on the Wait, Rock says... Gonna, we have been on for three hours now. Bang on three hours. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Life on the Rocks Dean says, I'm mm. trying to get on. Mate, I've sent you an Instagram message with a link. It's up to you to click that button. You carry on, you join the, the, the bloody live chat, and we will go on for, <laughs> for, for another five hours. I don't give a shit. Um, <laughs> Dean, Daniel's pissed and can't read the comment. Dean is referring to Life on the Rocks. Um, Richard Lake bike packing adventure says hashtag piss it up mate you ain't wrong <laughs> um, real brown says life on the rocks i tried to get back on when i found a hamster run to my laptop <laughs> and he didn't notice and uh, life say replies to that saying good times mike i don't know who mike is who's mike uh, um, Cornish Guys and Camping. Cornish Guys and Camping, Cornish yeah, Mike Brown. Yeah, yeah, he says King's Tour is awesome. And he really is. Cannot have stole is, the yeah. virtues of <laughs> uh, King's Tour enough. This here, sorry, no, this here, is, this isn't here. 
You know what, people? People who are actually sticking around, we're down to 14, and this is entirely my fault. I am drunk. I should not be drinking on a live video cast, and I'm going to try and learn from this <laughs> for a future live cast because I plan to do a bunch more. Um, whatever. Um, what I said earlier about... I don't know if I said it. Um, this is my... Fuck it, I'm going to leave no trace kit. So I have a bag, and usually it's a carrier bag, and it folds up super tiny and clips inside another tiny bag, which I hang from a carabiner from my backpack. And that is where I I carry in my waste bag. And on yeah. the way out, I roll it up, and I strap it to the top of a pack, and that goes in the bin on the way home leave no trace is such a simple simple easy peasy um thing that mm. we don't even really need to think about it wouldn't you agree so i mean we don't need to think about it do we? yeah no not at all really? i think end end of the day it's it's down to upbringing isn't it? I, mean, I was always taught don't throw a litter on the floor don't throw so litter some, on the floor, put it in the bin. Yeah, exactly. So somewhere along the line, these grown-ass adults that are leaving crap on the moor, at the beach, in the That's field, on a footpath. Yeah, carry on. Yeah. Well, it's not you and me. We, we're not leaving rubbish, are we? But um, yeah, somewhere so, along the line. You and me, these, I mean, you and me yeah. as in our yeah, yeah. generation. Yeah. Yes, Fuck yeah. the um, police yeah. generation. NWA <laughs> uh, generation. Fuck the police. We don't care. The rules are for everybody else, but not us because we are special. That generation <laughs> says, do what the fuck you like. Basically, yeah. Am I right? Am yeah. I right? Or am I wrong? <laughs> no, no, you're right, yeah. Uh, it, it, I'm it's right. It's all down to... Uh, at the risk of sound like a grumpy old fight, it comes down to respect at the end of the day and a lot of people are losing it these days for like, not just for each other, but for like the world around us, isn't it, really? Absolutely. Which Absolutely. is a, a shame, really. I mean, especially now, you know, the state of the world at the minute, we need to be kinder to each other and to the planet because we've only got one, you know, Did planet. you know, Stu, that, so. that, uh, that England, not the UK, not Great Britain, but England in particular, which unfortunately caters to everything north of the border of Cornwall and everything <laughs> southwest of the border of Cornwall, mm. is the loss in terms of um, access to um, areas of next outstanding natural beauty, uh, mm. areas of free to roam or right to roam ground in the whole of Europe. Mm. I mean, we are the guys. We are the, we are the Commonwealth. We are the, the world order. We, England, the UK, Great Britain is in charge of the world. We should be setting an example for wild camping or at the very least access to nature throughout the UK and the rest of the Commonwealth. Don't you agree? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Um, I see you're a little bit apprehensive mm. about that because probably the way I'm wearing it because I'm a little bit drunk. But yeah, the, <laughs> read past the I'm drunk and I'm saying we're great and, and go into a little d deeper bit saying why are we not the leaders in right to roam in the whole entirety of the world? Yeah, I don't, I don't get that really because Scotland's got it. You can camp in pretty much every national park in America. Um, look at look at England, right? Yeah. We're here, right? Yeah. Scotland is here. Mm. Scotland's a tiny comparison, right? They've got enlightened right to reign rules written or enshrined as the, the term is mm. into yep. legality 
Yeah. England doesn't have it. England is tiny. Look at the rest of the entirety of the planet Earth. Go to Australia. Find somewhere on, in Australia that you can't well camp. Mm. Just do it. You, you I'll pretty much guarantee you, you can. The whole of Australia is open. I was speaking to a guy, I think it's called uh, Norway Hikes. He's a subscriber of my channel and a frequent commenter. A commenter. And he says, come to Norway. You camp wherever you like. It's cool. Mm. It's the only thing that's free in our country, but you can camp wherever you like. Yeah, yeah. yeah even in the country where everything is charged upon, pitching up your tent is free. Yeah. Yeah, we have this tiny little proportion of the entirety of the whole of the UK, or let's say England, where historically wild yeah. camping is per- perfectly legitimate. Yet in this past week, they've removed that. That's sad, isn't it? Everybody in the comments, if you agree that the removal of wild camping legitimacy on Dartmoor is potentially morally incorrect. Please comment hashtag F you. <laughs> I'd love to see that. F, just, just two letters, F you. <laughs> because you know what? So, uh, sorry. You're not sorry. So let's do it. Let's do it. Yes. Um, <laughs> I shouldn't be as drunk. Let's do it. <laughs> um, are you familiar with um, bands, bands, musical bands, <laughs> such as Billy Talent or Anti Flag, etc., yep. etc.? You are. Yeah. You are. yeah. Right, yeah. So they basically say the system, yeah? Mm-hmm. Is that right? Radiant's machine. Yep. We need to the system. Mm-hmm. We need to say, look, guys, you know, you own all this land. You own huge amounts of land on Dartmoor, or Scotland, mm-hmm. the Peak District, the Lake District. But hey, guys, come on, play fair, yeah. Is that mm. right? Totally, yeah. Mm. I mean, there's only right. so much they can do with, with all that land, you know? They, they, yeah. <laughs> it's sad that they can't even cut the grass. Moving on. <laughs> right, okay. So, tomorrow, Saturday the 21st of well, January. today. <laughs> yeah. What? Is it really? Bloody hell. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. Isn't it? Let's say tomorrow, right? So tomorrow or today, January the 21st of 2013, Right to Roam are organising a mass protest by traversing, uh, in particular, Alexander Darwell's yeah. land on Dartmoor. Mm-hmm. Yep. Is this still going to have a positive outcome? How do you feel? Don't worry about the risk of offending anybody. This is your honest opinion. I think it'll draw attention to it more than potentially it has already, which can only be a good thing, I think. So Um, with the drawing of attention, are we looking at a positive or a negative outcome? I'd like to think from a mass while trespass. Yeah. yeah, I mean technically it's not a trespass because um, they've said that people can continue to hike and things there. Bingo. Um, and you know, as long as people camp on the northern half of the of um, Stolmore and Harfordmore, um, according which according to the map is where we're allowed to. Yeah. Then no one's doing no one's doing anything wrong, are they? Really. Obviously, there'll be media coverage, so it'll kind of it'll get the um, the message out there more. But yeah, I, I don't think that 
there's going to be any issues really. Um, obviously, unless, like Becca said, you know, people take the glue sticks with them and stick themselves to a, a tour. <laughs> um, oh, man, I'm br- so bringing my my gel base super glue with me. <laughs> I am going to slap my left cheek to the side of the more. Just freeze my ass off all night because I've got nothing better to do. Um, if <laughs> if a mass well, okay, we can't call it a mass trespass. Uh, mass trespass, can we? Um, mm. If something was to occur tomorrow during the day yeah. or the evening that mm. antagonised the landowners of Dartmoor, yeah. what do you think the outcome might be? Ooh, um potentially at the minute because it's it's all quite new and things with developments in the agreement they, they might just do a knee-jerk reaction and go right then screw you guys you had your chance you blew it potentially um but at, at the same time that might damage their image because they, they've caused this whole you know massive court case and uproar and things like that and to then turn around and go you know I mean, like I said earlier today, you know, the, the Darwals are probably the most hated people in the southwest of England right now. So if anything does happen tomorrow, they might want to kind of keep things quiet to avoid further damaging the reputation from what they've already done by causing all this and pissing all these people off in the first place. It's sad, isn't it, to think that yeah. I mean, as, as um, where are we? Um... Sai, he was meant to, jo- to, 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 to join us on the um, live cast earlier. Nobody is pointing at the elephant in the room. The bylaw gives access. How mm. can there be access if there is a shoot? And he follows it up with yeah. the whole point is stopping yeah. camping there. And we're yeah. talking about yeah. uh, Storm Wars. Yeah. yeah. Was Which so is why I think, didn't pull yeah, his or her head up and get shot. Yeah. Which is why I think they say we can camp on the northern part and they're going to keep the shoots on the southern part. Um, yeah. Obviously, because because yeah. when, when the shoot's taking place, there needs to be a reasonable backstop, doesn't there? To to avoid is... bullets and things straying yeah, yeah. and hitting a member of the public. So they've probably um, figured it out. So where the boundary line starts and finishes is probably an incline in the terrain. Yeah, yeah. Which would be no good for um, us while campers because we're going to yeah. camp on a 45 degree, are we? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, Mark and Becca, they went before the process of the week and they said that it was pretty rubbish for camping, really. It is. Um, the whole the, of the storm war is yeah. crap. There's nothing yeah. there. There, there. There's no good land to put a pitch on. There's no yeah. um, points of interest. I mean, you've got the, the massive stone rotor, haven't you, really? That's, you know, the biggest one in Europe, potentially the world. No, I mean for camping. <laughs> oh, for camping, sorry, yeah. Pitching yeah. your tent, and this is where the argument arises, is wild camping. Mm. On Stormore, there is nowhere yeah. to pitch a tent that is of yeah. any real interest to true wild campers. Are you in agreement yeah. with that? I've not been there myself personally, but I've I've been told Either it's right. pretty boggy. It's is loads of mires. There's not really you know nice soft flat spots to to pitch on. It's um, absolute bollocks. Yeah, mate. I mean, I mean the, the only part that I've kind of do want to go on um, is like Ugra Beacon, oh, which is right, where Karen yeah. comes. Yeah, um, which is where Karen went. I saw her video and I thought that looks awesome. I want to go and camp on that. Obviously, that's off the map now. But whenever I go to college... You're going to have to title your next video as Stealth Camping on Agra Beacon. I I was considering that, really, because when I go to Mm. college on Tuesday and Thursday evenings, I drive past it. And every time when when I'm driving past it, it's pretty much as, you know, I start college at six, I finish work at four, so it's that kind of golden hour time when I'm driving past it. And I think the views from up there and the sunsets must be incredible. So I I do really want to go up there and do a camp at some point. It's a brilliant place, and I, yeah. Although I've never camped there personally, 
I want to. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm going to have to put the, the title of Stealth Camping. Yeah. Totally not occupying no. Ugra Beacon. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, right, we're going to move on a little bit because, I mean, quite frankly, yeah, I'm going to carry it's... on for drinking. Yeah, yeah. We are three hours <laughs> in. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a live cap. Come here. And so we've only got one more point. Tired and one more point to um, cover. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I was, was going to say, I've, I've got to go volunteer in the woods clearing rhododendrons at 9 a.m. So I need to get some sleep. Um, That's and we've been on over three hours already. So, yeah, do a couple more questions and then and I'll shoot off because I've still not been for that pee that I needed earlier. So, <laughs> so moving on, he clearly doesn't want people walking or camping on his land and we are still allowed. He just wants some sort of pay- payment. Excuse me, I'm, I'm really sorry. Mm. Um, for people slash taxpayer to pay uh, to roam his land. Oh, cracky. What, what does that say to you then, Stu? Clearly, doesn't mind people walking his land once. Yeah, I mean, I said earlier, I think it's funny how he said initially no one has the right to camp on Stolmore overnight. And then obviously they had the meeting with the landowners and now money's been mentioned and he's gone, oh, actually, he can camp on on the moor. I just think it's a bit of a weird coincidence, you know, because yeah, when, yeah. when I saw that on, on the updated map, I thought, well, that's wrong because it, it can't be updated because he's land stolen there. Obviously, well, oh, yeah. once released, yeah. So, so I thought something's weird, and then I looked at the old map. <coughs> excuse me, with it, it's literally half of his land. It's like a, a straight yeah, line, it. pretty much across. And then I read a statement from um, Harford Moor as well, which is the one next to it. Um, and they said, you know, you can camp on the northern point from northern. Um, from Piles Cops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's fair enough. Really, nature reserve, isn't it? Um, Oh, but yeah, yeah. It, it, they said, I can't remember the spots now, but from one point to the other in a line, any, anywhere north of that is fair game, they said, basically. Anywhere yeah, south yeah, of that yeah. isn't. And that line pretty much matches the same as Darwell's. I think my boy, <laughs> uh, Dartmoor Wild Camper, camped on that land last night. Uh, oh, did he? With no issue. <laughs> Yeah. Excuse me, I'm, I'm really quite hiccupy and drunk. <laughs> I'm not a drink, drinker. Um, yeah, Tours and More says Ratas. That's me. Yeah, <laughs> that's me. Uh, would it help <laughs> if I brought my dog into the equation, mate? That's, that's the only question I ask. <gasps> oh. Um, on that <laughs> note, right, so we've gone through absolutely everything that I had queued up for discussion, I think. Yeah, I mean, like I say, it's um, been you know, three hours, 20 minutes almost. Uh, I imagine we have gone through pretty much everything. And we've gone through quite a lot, haven't we? We have. We've done pretty well, mate, considering your current condition. We've done pretty good. <laughs> <gasps> oh, <crikey laughs> my current condition. Um, Stu and Cap... Stu and Karen and Sai and Becca. I am exceedingly grateful for your attendance in this live um, broadcast. And I think we've covered a lot of ground. There's a lot for us to think about and Mm. a lot of us uh, for us to consider going forward yeah yeah and i i've got a lot of opinions that i need to consider tomorrow when i'm sober quite frankly <laughs> it's a it's a weird situation being drunk trying to cover factual information while having hiccup is pretty terrible <laughs> <laughs> and I am ever well, entertaining so at the same time. So <laughs> I'm ever so g- grateful for Stu for keeping me kind of grounded. <laughs> He's done a pretty 
pretty good drop. <laughs> um, Stu is an empty Kerno. We've had uh, Sai, who is at Riella Brown. We've had Karen, who is KS Gone. While checking out in the description below, there's links to all of them. And yep. if not, oh, excuse me. If not immediately, there will also be a link to Muddy Boot later's. Uh, I'm, I think I'm going to actually uh, link up her Instagram rather than her YouTube because her YouTube is quite new. Um, yeah, she she has I, shared um, my Instagram story from earlier. So if you go on my story um, on Instagram, you will see that I've tagged her, so you'll be able to find her Instagram that way. Same so with, uh, is there with anything Dan. you want to say going out of this podcast? Anything I want to say? Um, thanks to everyone for joining us. Thanks for your questions. Um, any other questions, message me or Dan or comment on Instagram, wherever. Obviously, hit the like button. Thanks, Sai. Si. Um, subscribe to Dan um, if you haven't already. If you could subscribe to me as well, that would be awesome. I'm on 320 subs at the minute. Once I get to 350, I'm going to do a giveaway. I've got a Sun Blesser head torch. I got sent two to review. Uh, so I'm going to be giving one of those away when I get to 350. So if you want to possibly win that, head over to my channel. Uh, obviously, follow Dan, Becca, everyone else, Karen, because they're all awesome, awesome people. Um, yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. I really do appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, I better get to bed because I've got to be in the woods in... Eight hours. <laughs> it's quite crazy, isn't it? Um, right, so yeah. we're go about to do the live giveaway. So, the, oh my goodness, I I am not a good <laughs> drunk. So I'm going to apply this to the people who are still currently here in the YouTube chat, and this is pretty damn exclusive. So, if you want to win a BRS 3000 T, 29 gram or 26 gram or however you say it. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm hoping you'll forgive me. Um, titanium alloy ultralight stove as featured in this video then make sure that you have already commented hashtag 3000 hashtag T. Uh, whatever. I've already given the instructions. So we're going to do a live draw just about now. Um, ignore the first winner. Because that's just me testing the uh, giveaway website. So I'm going to hit present. I'm going to hit. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm terribly drunk. I shouldn't do this bad. This is bad. I shouldn't do this again. So I'm going to hit the present button and probably miss it. Share screen, there we go. We're going to share the screen and we're going to go to Chrome tab and the next Chrome tab is new tab. From there, we're going to go to um, stream yard.com slash give away. Now, if you were in the video, in the live chat at the right time, then you will know that I announced a giveaway. I hope I'm doing this wrong. Um, for a prize. Oh, my God. I shouldn't drink. For a prize of a BRS 3000T. Oh my God, I 
I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't do do this drunk. Right, okay, we're getting there. So for a 3000T um, BRS 3000T um, ultra, ultralight camping stone. So we're going to do a draw now. Ish. Give me a moment. I am having real trouble coordinating my mind to my fingers. <laughs> right, here we go. So I'm going to choose the broad broadcast, excuse me, which will be Dartmoor Wild Camping Van Lifted. Really? Yep. Live, I'm gonna search for the keyword <laughs> fire it up because we're referring to a gas stove. So let's see who the winner is. Nobody, nobody. Hashtag fire it up. All right, so to determine the winner now, because nobody's typed the right. Oh, I'm just going to go back through my conversation window, through the chat, and find the first. Oh, oh excuse me. Um, fire it up comment. Do you know what's funny? Nobody has replied hashtag fire it up. Nobody. So we have no winners. That really sucks. <gasps> Excuse me. That really sucks. I mean, it's like beyond belief how badly that sucks. So what I'm going to do I'm going to change this. Uh, I'm going to change this to the first person that commented BRS because you were clever and you got in there before anybody else. This is going a bit matrixy, so um, I'm concentrating on. <gasps> oh. This area over here on the right hand side of the screen. Okay, so hit comments. All the way back to the very, very beginning. And then the very beginning is going to show me. So the very, 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 very first person. I'm not selecting him. I'm going to go randomly by the second person that mentions hashtag BRS. So the very first person was unfortunately me. Second was Dave Outdoors. I'm going to count him as the first because I don't count. So Dave Outdoors, unfortunately, you don't wait straight away. So let's change the giveaway tool to hashtag BRS. I'm so slowly concentrating on this. So let's hit um, slot screen and present and ship. Share screen, 
go share screen again and say the Chrome tab that I want open is the giveaway tool. Share. And the winner is... So the one entry, I think that's me. Control it. Ah, oh, guys, really, this sucks. I think I am going to do an independent of this live stream tour for who wins the BRS 3000T Ultralight 20 odd gram stove. And you guys are in a chance for a winner. I'll do this at another point because it's no good. So, before we close, I want to end up on a couple of comments. Now, we are three hours, 35 minutes into the stream. Um, so, I'm going to go here. Just picked up randomly. Uh, wasn't her bra shoots tour. No, mate. Um, I, it's been independently verified that the half bra that was on Shoots Tour was not Karen's. It was the wrong size and shape. Um, so, no. Let's go forward a bit. Um, I'm going to pick this one. Karen says, I can try to talk you through, through it, Becca. Uh, but I muddled my way through that. I ain't got a clue what says. Okay, Ford. Uh, Cornish Cowboy. Do you remember on Great Miss Tour last year when I pushed you and a friend off as I had the best pitch? And it was a very wind, uh, windy and wet and dark night. And you end up going home. Yes, mate. I totally remember. And I'll tell you what. That, my friend, was the first or two attempts that Justin and I tried to attempt. <gasps> oh. Hey, what? Oh. A wild camp together. I've lost my glass. On that more. Oh. It's really unfortunate. Go through the cup. It's a bit more. I'm just going to pick one at random. This one. Realaban says, as someone <gasps> said earlier, I'm very sorry. I should stop drinking all these. Um, as someone who said earlier, our rights get taken a bit at a time. The law on trespass for the tra travellers compared is no criminal. First stage to get all trespass, trespass made criminal in the future. Criminal was a harsh word, so that I don't know how else you're going to go. Let's go with this one. Uh, one girl oh, and her dog says, yes, it's fair. We pay for the DEFRA. DEFRA for upholding our right to camp. What's not fair is the agreement because the rich get richer. Love, you're, you're, you're spot on. Personally, Curly Cats, me, Dave, we don't mind the idea of paying a yearly, six monthly, monthly, bi weekly, weekly permit. It's cool. If we want to experience a night under the stars over a fantastic sunset and, um, sunrise and, and all the rest of it without the fear of disturbance without the fear of 
being moved on the night, yeah, I quite happily pay for it. Let me go on. Uh, let's go here. I don't know what the comment there is. I'm picking at random. Why have? Why not have a? Sm- Let's cover my eye. Why not have a very small permit to use wild camp? Uh, to use wild uh, Dartmoor for wild camping. I have to pay to use a local, local canal to paddle on, but it's very well kept. Now, you make a good point there, Cole. Um, I don't foresee a potential increase in the upkeep of the land of Dartmoor in respect of them or the landowners receiving a stipend blackmail payment, a ransom for the use of wild camping by us. I, it's just not going to happen, mate. In, in principle, good idea. Uh, in practice, probably a bit sucky. Um, what One girl and a dog once again says, I thought it was only the landowners who have signed the agreement who are getting money. Probably. That, that's the only comment I have on that. Uh, Last on the Rock says, Daniel, I'm out. I personally think they are getting too much coverage. Dartmoor is ours. It always ha- has been and always will be. I just want to see Dates bumhole. I hope you get the reference. No, mate, I'm sorry, Dean, but, but nah, I don't. Pick another one at random. Uh, South Coast Outdoor says Crack and Soap. Yeah, it, if you're referring to the um, BRS 3000T, yes. Uh, Life on the Rock says, Yo, Dan, I have an alternative view. Alternative view. Can I come on soon? I'm, mate, I sent you a link. I'm really sorry that you haven't come on. I'd love to have hear you. <gasps> oh, excuse me. Make that alternative view. We'll save that one for another time. Um, Dave, I saw Outdoor says, It's been a great evening. Thank you, mate. I really appreciate that. Uh, I'm again picking at random. Rihanna Brown says, Cornish Night of Camping. I'm well, thanks, Harry. You okay? Let's go to uh, Rihanna Brown again. The whole point of stopping camping, there was so a camper didn't pop his her head up and get shot. I don't agree with that, mate. I think it's more about, I think it's more about control. Let's face it, those who own land have the greatest amount of control. Those who own uh, own the greatest amount of land, not just in the South West, or just in Cornwall, just in Dartmoor, own the biggest amount of control. And that's what it's about. Uh, We tend to think of land ownership in terms of riches. Well, really, I think it is about who owns what. Who owns the South Moor? Who owns the East Moor? Who owns the West Moor? Who owns the North Moor? Who owns the South Moor? At the end of the day, it's about... I'm bigger than you, I've got money than you, and therefore I get to stipulate what you can and cannot do. Quite frankly, that's what, that's what I think. Uh, going to our, back to our points of discussion, I think we've covered pretty much all the ground. Um I would love to say everything. 
Uh, what we haven't covered was my last point, which was the uncertainty of the Marshall Park plan to <laughs> appear the court ruling. What do we think? I, I, from a purely financial standpoint, I think that enough people will say, hey, we don't agree with this shit. Here's 10 quid and let's discuss this. Which I think is healthy. I don't think we should have to pay purely for the. Uh, 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 opportunity to discuss, but people are willing to pay for that. Um, how do Cornish Cowboy says, How? How do uh, the whole point? point of stopping camping was so camper didn't pay to pop up his her head and get shot true l and t should be leave no trace and that should intrinsically in, in imply the phrase of um not only leave no trace, but leave no presence. Uh, moving on from the comments. Oh, sorry, I'm really drunk. Corinne's Cowboy says, yeah, I guess we would have to sort the men from the boys. Um, stepping away from that one because I don't want to get into all this fucking sex with shit. Um, let's go for a bit and make this my last one, whatever it is. NMT Kerner, who has been with us throughout the pretty much entirety of the live cast, says, though the only way they can realistically check permits is if you display it in your car, car window. So happen to chance upon your car. What are people? What about the people that get dropped off? Well, that's a good point. Well, are we going to have to carry our wallet? Are we going to have to pass uh, uh, contacts a little ID D card, much like a driving license? We have to show that the police and mountaineering and the Dark World Ranger Authority, or what? I don't know. Quite frankly, I don't know. Haven't got a clue. Well, I can say on that particular instance is what will be, my friend, what will be. On that note, I am ever so grateful for everybody's attendance. I mean, we've been broadcasting now for, what, three hours, 47 minutes and 53 seconds. It's ridiculous. I should never, ever have let this live cast go so, so, so long. I think we've raised a lot of important, relevant uh, comments to tonight I think that everything pretty much everyone has said in the comments in the chat whether it be me myself LMT Kerno Stu Riala Bran uh, excuse me Chaos Gone Wild kind of uh, Karen's Gone Wild or Becca, muddy bootlaces. We've raised a lot of good points and ones that I think I want to see addressed by the DMPA, by the 
start more whatever the fuck they're called landowners association um i want to see that this stuff addressed i want to see an outcome i want to see a resolution i want to see something either positive or negative that says you are or you're not allowed to do shit do you know what i mean it's it, it's crazy to think that a few few people are saying no. Would you pay for a permit to live camp or what? Uh, sorry, so it's, would you? Uh, would you pay? For a permit to wild camp on Dartmoor, would you pay for a uh, permit to one wild camp on any other part of England's areas of outstanding natural beauty, um, uh, 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 areas of, of beauty, national trust land, and so on and so forth, natural parks? Would you pay for that? Would you be willing to pay for that? Um, sorry, I've covered my left eye. If the police were to randomly pop up and say, Hey, mate, where's your permission to wild camp on Dartmoor? If you can't produce it, you can be arrested. All right, fair enough. How do we gather that information? All right. Um, Sai says, Brian Man says, uh, I can walk into the moor in 15 minutes. Well done, mate. Um, but I get a permit if required of it. Looking right in from my sh shoulder is not what it's been for about. Uh, for me for about 40 years I agree mate I'm not for me this for about like, what, two three years and the idea I mean the very fact that I go to Dartmoor should stipulate the intention that I I don't, don't want to be disturbed wild camping on Dartmoor has for the most part been legitimised and therefore I'm not going to be wild camping on Dartmoor with the if he moved on um So I've covered my left eye again. <laughs> I like this. I like this. Um, Towards the more says relevant imports don't get pissed on live stream, mate. You're probably right. And then he says hi. Uh, he'll watch this back tomorrow and we'll get the beer. Yeah, yeah. You're not wrong. Um. Moving on, Cornish Cowboy says, we love you, man. You're fucking brilliant. You know what, mate? I'm totally honest. T totally 100% honest. I've been doing this YouTube game now for, what? Two years? What? Dead man's fingers, man. I love it. I've been doing wild camping for pretty much the same amount of time. Pretty. And over the couple of years that I've been doing this, I've made some fantastic connections. Some really great friends. Some really enlightening contacts from acquaintances that have a different point of view to me but I don't oh, oh, I don't begrudge them of them at all they're wonderful, wonderful people. and I'll say straight up Becca while, while uh, excuse me mucky bootlaces I don't agree with Everything that Becca, Becca says, I don't agree with everything that 
that Karen says, and she's been my oldest friend from my YouTube journey. I didn't ag agree with everything everyone says about wild camping on Dartmoor, whether it be doom and gloom or everything is wonderful or somewhere in between where I think I like to sit. But at the end of the day, everybody has an opinion. I'm very, 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 very happy that important people within the Dartmoor wild camping community have had the opportunity to uh, oh, portray their individual points of view about the the past, the current, and the future of wild camping on Dartmoor. It's been amazing. Thank you very much. Uh, let's go through the list. Uh, Stuart and to uh, Karen A. Uh, Cy, who is Re Alabram. Chaos Gone Wild, who is Karen's Gone Wild. And Becca, who is Mecca, uh, Becca, Mecca, Becca, 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 Mecca. Um, bootlaces, thank you so much for joining me on this live stream. I had a really enjoyable time. We're coming up to three hours and 55, uh, 50, 56 minutes of this live cast. It's got far longer, more than twice as long long as I anticipated. Thank you very much for all of you who decided to join me. It's still like nine people here. So let's hit this draw. Right. So moving on, let's get rid of whatever the fuck this is. And I'm gonna add in a share screen and we're going to go for a Chrome OS tab we're going to go for a giveaway tool we we'll stipulate the fact that the uh, giveaway is associated with the uh, broadcast that is titled Dartmoor Wild Camping Van Lifted really live and we're going to look for the word uh, the keyword, fire it up, because I'm a wannabe rapper. I'm going to go with start collecting comments. So anybody, anybody who has um, contributed to the live stream, the hashtag fire it up, you are going to be the ones that are going to be in the chance of winning and it looks like the number of entries is unfortunately a minimal number of two so so see what happens here we go go Dave outdoors Richard Lake a bike capping you are the winner are you still here Please instantly reply the word yes. Let me give this like, like, I don't know, 20 seconds. Let me co correct the spelling of that. Richard Lake Wild Backpacking. Back Currently, you are the winner of the BRS 3000T Alloy Titanium Alloy 26 to 29 gram stove, which sits at about that bit big, screws to the top of your gas can, and away you go. It takes about 30 seconds longer than the jet oil, bit costly, a damn sight less. And on top of that, 
if you're not already paying for jet foil, then you have potentially just like, like I don't know, 12, 15, 15 quid to pay for a PRS 3000T. Right, okay, so our boy hasn't responded. Let's run this again. Give me a moment. All right, so second time. Unfortunately, Richard Lake, while backpacking, because you haven't stuck around to the end of the stream, you have not won. So let's draw again. Dave Outdoors hit me with a response. Uh, if you've if you respond, you've won. If you don't respond, then we'll say this one another time. It's cool. Say that, George, are you going to respond? You have little. Really, 10 seconds. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, excuse me, right back, seven, eight, nine, ten. You haven't responded, so I'm going to pick a winner at random. Nobody has responded. Responding, so I'm going to go scrolling through. Let me just bring this page up. Right, okay. So you can't see see its entirety. Uh, this page in its entirety. So I'm going to go to present. I'm going to share the screen. I'm going to get sober. Share screen. I'm going to go with Chrome tab. Streamyard. So to keep this fair. I'm going to go and scroll through. You can see this. I'm going to go and scroll through all the people that have hashtagged comment we're looking for. And now I'm going to find the very, very next one that says hashtag 3200. Uh, 3100. Three, I don't know what it fucking says. All right, it's too much. Too much from when I go to bed. So I'm going to award this to one of my co-hosts this evening. Because I can't find a comment that says hashtag prior out. I'm going to award this to... Let me see. Uh, we've got four, four, five cheers. We've got LT Kona. Kona's gone wild. Uh, we have a brand at Mucky Beavis, so we got like a one in four chance, a quarter, uh, 25 percent chance. I'm gonna go with Mucky Beavis. I want to see you use the BRS 3000T, uh titanium alloy stove that I'm going to send you in your next video. Uh, it's free for you to use. You can give it forever. You can give it away, uh, away again to one of your fans. That's cool. But uh, Becca, you are the winner. And away we go. Guys, good night. It is currently 0144. 44, so that's one uh, quarter to 2 a.m. on the 21st of January 2023. I really appreciate every single guest that has enjoyed, uh, joined, joined me. So it's NMT Curry, uh, uh, Mr. 
Riala Brown, Chaos Gone Wild, Mucky Boot Races. Thank you so much. Thank you very much to uh, thank you very much for everyone who's joined in the chat. I really appreciate that as well. And I hope for your support in my individual wild camping uh, adventures in the future and the individual wild campings of everybody who has spoken on this channel, whether it be on the live stream itself or in chat. And again, save, uh, not save, uh, extol the virtues of LMT. Leave no tr trace to your friends, your family, or anyone else who might visit Dartmoor. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining LMT Kono. Thank you for joining uh, uh, Riel Brand. Thank you for joining uh, uh, Karen's KS Gone Thank you for joining Muddy Venus. I really appreciate everything you guys have done tonight for your comments, for your descriptions, for your opinions, everything. I'm very, very sorry for getting drunk tonight, and I plan to possibly not do that again in the future. Um, I hope that we will have a positive outcome tomorrow on the 20th of January 2013, starting from Prince Town, wherever it is. Um, I won't be joining personally. I have other committees commitments tomorrow morning um, but I certainly hope that whatever is demonstrated tomorrow is done in, in, in a positive light, in an effective light and has a positive outcome for the wild camping community on Dharma again, once more, thank you very much for joining us for the live stream or for the replay you take care. I'll see you on the other side. Good night. Goodbye. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Good night.